All right, welcome to D and D Builds. This is uh, the very first D and D Dungeon Master stream. Uh, these are the players that uh, contributed on Patreon, became Dungeon Master level patrons, and I am super happy to welcome them to a D and D stream where I get to host as the DM. Usually on D and D Builds, we do plenty of ridiculous builds, but today we're doing a D and D session. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce some of our players. First up on my little list oh, there is uh, Jason Willowhammer. Feel free to say hello, introduce your character, uh, at least as much as you'd like to without spoiling any random surprises. Hello, um, I'm Jason. Uh, I'm playing Professor S, a um, young sorcerer who is looking for other uh, people who have the S gene. Um, and he's trying to get them into a school so they can learn to harness their magic. And next up, we'll go with Bot, who has also been known in many of my videos as Kilo Kilo. How's it going? Um, I'm playing a human variant. Uh, goes by Sasha Stormwind and She's basically just dressed up as a pirate, and she believes she's one of the best wizards already around. And last but not least, we have Devin Happy. Hi, I'm Devin. I'm playing a dragonborn paladin named Zin Talagaf, Oath of the Watchers, and he is sworn to protect the, this realm and everyone in it. Cool. So, in this D&D session, I will be throwing a random world at them. It'll be completely fantasy-based. Uh, so, think Skyrim, think Dungeons & Dragons, think anything along those levels. It w they will be diving in... Uh, uh, yes, I am keeping that in mind, no additions, no worries. Uh, but uh, we will be in a very large city to start. Our adventurers have been in a group together for a little bit of time, just enough to be comfortable fighting alongside each other, but they might not know each other's deepest, darkest secrets. So, uh, we start off in a city called Bildus, just because I like branding. So, we're going to stick with that. Uh, they just found their way into this city, and uh, they recently came in and came across an adventurer's sort of tavern, let's say. It is a very common place for adventurers to come, find quests, and get to know the people as well as find what work they can do to help out around town. As soon as they show up, they are greeted by the exterior. And let me switch over to that. As we go over to this battle map, I just want to make everyone aware, we are currently playing on roll 20. Although we will have plenty of battle maps available, there will be a significant amount that is just theater of the mind. But our party comes to the front gate of the Adventurer's Hall. They're welcome to join or they can, they are welcome to enter the Adventurer's Hall or they can just roam free if that's what they prefer. So. It's up to all of you. I think I'm going to step inside. Go for it. And you can feel free to move your little icon around as you please. As long as it allows you and I didn't screw anything up in the setup. It doesn't it does. seem to want me to move. For me it does. Uh, let me make sure that you are all set on your end. And give it another try if you're still having issues. I'm using select move and still doesn't want me to move it. Oh, I just uh, drag it around with my mouse. Yeah, and even if I like... Uh, click it and then try to drag it around it doesn't move oh huh. well it's just drawing shapes oh uh make sure to have the little pointer selected in the top left oh you I do oh you have the select move already selected yeah. that is 
annoying. But uh, I will move you in and uh, just be fairly aware of it. Uh, and I will move Jason in as well. So you come into this bar. Uh, it is a very normal tavern. It is pretty lively. You hear some bards up on a stage over in the corner. And they are uh, very unskilled at their lutes, to say the least. But they're trying to jam out best they can. You also see a group of adventurers chatting and drinking as it's pretty close to dinner time. And uh, there's even one of very boisterous, uh, very boisterous character that is actually bouncing a gnome on his biceps back and forth. And he's very loud and over the top. You also see that there is a bartender cleaning some mugs and pouring drinks. What would you all like to do? Kind of wanting to see what that gnome jumping on someone's biceps is about. Yeah, go for it. Interesting. So you head on over and uh, it's a female gnome that's just kind of enjoying life. And you see a large, well-built man and he even has a bit of armor still on his legs, but... He's got his biceps going. He's just bouncing back and forth. And he's just shouting about how amazing he is. And the the gnome woman seems to be having the time of her life. Uh, Sarah, what are you... What are you doing? Oh, what am I doing? I am just showing off my amazing muscles. You are not aware of me. I am Dalton of this town. And he uh, he reaches out his hand to shake yours, but immediately drops the gnome in the process as he was bouncing them on his arm. And she falls to the ground with a loud oof, but uh, doesn't seem perturbed at all. I am going to come over and help her to her feet. You immediately help the gnome up, and she thanks you, but looks at you very strangely. Uh, is there a problem here? And she just goes, uh, uh, no, um, thank you. And then just kind of diverts her attention immediately. And, uh, Professor S, uh, he's shaking your hand, and he just seems to be and you notice he immediately like catches a glimpse of his own reflection in a mirror and he's immediately distracted. I already don't like this guy. Okay, <laughs> so um, He seems to be quite full of himself. He Yeah, I don't he, think I'm gonna be like Uh as you are you saying that out loud? No, I'm whisper I'm mentally I'll be oh yeah sending a telepathy message to professor s he seems to be quite full of himself yes and uh he doesn't notice that you are conversing telepath telepathically at all at this point all right uh well Would anybody like to go get a drink? There's also a uh, quest board that you can see. Uh, it does have a series of quests available in case anybody wanted to do a straight for that, but you're more than welcome to do as much mingling as you'd like first. Yeah, well, I kind of just want to leave this guy <laughs> alone. So uh, I go to the uh, quest board. Really away from him you start perusing the quest board and in the meantime it looks like uh shara goes over to the bartender and he looks at you he has a very very manly mustache and uh he, he it kind of wiggles as he talks and he's it appears that the man is a dwarf usually dwarves have a long massive beard but he just has the quite powerful and impressive mustache uh I would say that's a good call out, Xavier. Uh, 
we'll keep that in mind for the future. Um, and the, the man with the very burly mustache just looks and says, what can I get for you? Um, how early in the day is it in the game right now? It is currently around dinner time, so close to 6 p.m., maybe 7. Um, I'm just going to order. I'm just going to look at the door and be like, I'm just going to order an ale. So, and what kind of food do you guys have here? Said, oh, we have a good amount of meat, eggs... That's all you really need. And then he pours a pint of ale and immediately slides it over. And uh, he says, that'll be one silver. I hand him a gold piece. He says, all right, I'll get you your change. And he like hand and he starts going through some coins. I'm only, uh, kind of just, while well, I wait for him to, kind of keeping an eye on him, mm -hmm. but kind of look around and see, like, if there was only one entrance and exit to this place, or... Uh, you do see that there is a back door, um, you'll notice it over here, uh, but there are plenty of windows around... And all of the blacked out area that you can see on your map appears to be rooms that are available for rent. Okay. And then I'm going to look back. Uh, and I'm just going to tell him. I'm going to also want some... Uh, I guess there's like any type of meat available here. Well, we have local game. It, uh, we have plenty of goat leg and beef ribs as well as a few servings of pork available. I'll have some goat as well. So, so it's, of course. And then he, you see him just take out this giant haunch of goat leg and just start slicing right off of it in front of you. And he just throws it on a plate, throws some interesting looking gravy on top, and he says, that'll be another silver. And then he hands you the the rest of your change, uh, minus the two silver from the gold that you handed over. I'm gonna leave three silver as a tip. He looks down at it, and you just see him humph, and he humphs so hard that his the bristles of his mustache kind of like blow outward, and he slides it very forcefully back, and he's like. I don't need any charity. It's not for charity. It's for good work. Says, I I charge the prices I charge for the work that I do, and I respect that my work is solid. He kind of looks at him, kind of <laughs> like confused, and be like, "Okay, more money for me." And then he just goes back to cleaning his glass and being very stoic. As Professor S is looking over the quest board, you notice that there are a few quests from a few different sources. Uh, not all of them actually list the sources, though. Some of them just kind of have like a general description as well as a, oh, this is what you can get as a reward type of thing. You have a quest from a local business owner. And he says, uh, which says, there has been a person or persons assaulting members of my establishment after they leave. I would like this person to be taken into custody and put to justice. I am tired of my business being constantly under siege. This is unfair. And you see that it rewards 10 gold. And it is from a local nightclub owner. Additionally, you see that there is a request from the town. And it is for some strange creatures in the sewers that they wish to be cleared out. Uh, that rewards five gold. But also, it is for the town. So it would probably shine pretty favorably on your group overall in the city. Uh... Next up, there is a request from a nearby island 
Bildis is a port city, so there are plenty of ships available for rent, um, unless you happen to have a background that gets free passage. But there is an island that is requesting help because there is a tribe of tabaxi that uh, has been constantly under assault from some unforeseen menace. They will cover all costs of the passage as well as additional rewards, which are undescriptive. Then lastly, uh, there is a general request, but it looks like it has been somewhat already claimed, although not completely. Uh, so there is a request from a local townsfolk and they say they cannot offer much, but they will give whatever meager possessions they have as their daughter has been apparently kidnapped by some sort of bugbear monstrosity and Dalton has claimed ownership of this particular quest, but he's looking for more members to join his party. And those are the quests that you see before you. There is the business owner with the club, the cleaning out the sewers, the taking a ship to a nearby island of tabaxi, and a woman held captive by a bugbear monstrosity. But you have to deal with so Dalton on I that one. Down, I look down all of the quests, and uh, I see things that, like, like... Uh, other people could do and then I see something that seems more uh, to the heart and like down to, uh, downstairs I'm like oh I'll help them and then I see Dalton and I just die <laughs> and I look over at Dalton but I'm assuming he's still bouncing the gnome on his muscle you and, say, and you see Dalton and he has a large bowl of hard boiled eggs right in front of him and he's like shoveling them into his mouth oh that is disgusting <laughs> okay <laughs> Zinn is going to um, so, uh, step up next to uh, Professor S and ask him, have you found anything we can do? Yes, there are a couple of things that uh, we could do to help around the city, but there is one thing uh, from a very concerned sounding mother, except there is one problem, and I just glare over at Delton that we will have to deal with before we can do this. Oh, and I should note that yeah. the, the rewards for pretty much every other quest do seem much more enticing. Uh, but, you know, the person says that they know that their daughter has been ca held captive for uh, close to a month now and they seem to be serving this bugbear monstrosity that they're aware of. I do not, not adventure for riches. I adventure for knowledge and experience and to help others. Well, so, that's very different. I adventure to, I adventure to protect those in this realm, but sometimes there are complications as I glare over at Dalton as well. And you see Dalton, he's also like taking a bow and arrow and like aiming it at a target across the way as he's trying to like also drink a beer and he's as just... he does this as he does this, I kind of like raise my shield just over Professor S. He's like <laughs> it's just like just to be sure. Uh, just in case. uh let's I'm gonna just just for the hell of it, I'm gonna roll a little bit there. Okay. Yeah, he, you, you see an arrow whiz past you, but it is not remotely close enough to put anybody in danger. I really don't oh. want Elton on this quest, <laughs> so I'm going to... Uh, ha or, no, it's just an ability. I'm going to telepathically communicate to him with my aberrant mind. Sure. Um, and I'm going to try to, at least try to, uh, convince him that, uh, like his past self is con uh, his future self is contact and saying if he goes on this thing, he will die very stupidly. And, uh, go ahead and make a persuasion check on that. Oh, it is. Uh, 
That is a pretty high roll uh, <laughs> with a 22, but uh, unfortunately, it is still not high enough. Are you kidding? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Dalton's ego is uh, hard to surpass. <laughs> uh, the one thing that the SD cannot surpass is some stupid man's effing ego. Uh, I just am looking at him, this arrow, which I'm assuming isn't aiming well, and I just, I, uh, wheel over to him, I, I feel I forgot to mention, I, uh, wheel to him, so that's right. I wheel over to him, and I say, uh, according to the pet board, it appears you have, uh, in, you are in need of other adventures on this, on this quest. He says, yes, of course, and he slaps you on the back and it, like, throws you out of your chair. And he just meant to uh, give you, like, a hearty pat on your back, but it kind of... It, uh, actually, uh, you can make in a contested athletics or acrobatics check. All right, with my minus one. <laughs> oh, 17. Oh, you managed to stay in your chair. You feel this large slap to your back, but you're like, "All right, what the what the f?" Um, but not that to me. <laughs> and he says, "Oh, we're we're planning on storming that uh, that monster's castle eventually." And he says, "But I'm waiting for that ma that father of hers to come up with a bit more of a reward." I'm hoping that he will promise me the daughter herself. And he's as he kind of pretends to whisper, but very loudly, so it's very obviously not a whisper. So by soon, you mean within the day, within the hour, perhaps? Ah! Uh, right now. And he like looks, he looks up at the at the window, and he's like. Within the month. So, what I'm hearing is you don't have any plans to rescue this girl unless her father gives you permission to marry her? So, well, marriage is a strong word. And he, he just says, I just mean more at my service. Uh, and you do notice this man has quite a bit of charisma. I want you to make a uh, insight check is in at advantage. At advantage, ooh, fun. All of us are just in. Just in. Uh, thirteen. You do know, uh, and it's specifically Zin because you notice that this man also seems to be a paladin of some sort, and you notice that he does have an emblem around his neck that uh, does show that he is probably a paladin of conquest. I think Zinn kind of just, like, closes his eyes for a second. De he breathes out very deeply and says, and tele tele telepathically to Professor S, this man seems to be a paladin of some sort. From his holy symbol, it's conquest. I don't like those men very much. Me neither. Across my time, they have always been a bit of a problem. And at that point, uh, he starts getting ready to, like, arm wrestle anybody he can while simultaneously hitting on any woman he sees in sight. But he hears that you're talking about this quest, and he goes and he snatches the, uh, the quest flyer off the board. As, and uh, at that point... What's Shara doing besides munching on some goat meat? I was kind of listening into the conversation. I don't know how far away they were, so I don't know how much of the conversation I could have heard. But like, I was kind of just listening in. But they would just they would probably be in this corner area while you are over, probably at the tables if you're eating. I was just kind of just trying to listen, but kind of just eat, but kind of just more looking around. 
you know, yeah. just seeing what is uh, out there and you not uh, kind of what people are doing, but more just yeah. Make make <laughs> make a perception check. Twenty one. 21. You immediately notice the bards in the corner. They are trying to, like, fiddle with their lutes. And any time they're trying to play, it's just not awesome. But they're still very unreasonably upbeat. And you see a sign next to them that says um, Wild Steeds. And that seems to be the name of their little group. But... uh, after they finish a very terribly strummed song, they like high five each other and they go to the bar to grab a drink. And other than that, you just see a random collection of adventurers and some common townsfolk and uh, bar maids and bar maidens, I guess. Do I see anything that's kind of easy to maybe steal that might be worth the value? Uh, you do see that they did leave their loots on stage, but they are fairly like average looking loots. Dalton does have a very fancy sword on his side. Uh, and there is a very interesting looking axe over the head of the bar. So Dalton has a very fancy sword on the side. Yes. I am completely for stealing Dalton's sword. <laughs> I it. am not. A, a big surprise. The lawful paladin is not for stealing from somebody, even if they don't like them. Yeah. Good thing I'm not a lawful paladin. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to... If... Are you going to approach us in the corner, or are you going to just kind of stay where you are for now? I'm going to finish my food and my drink. And okay. I'm going to walk over to you guys, wherever you guys end up going. All right. So as the time goes on, you see he's uh, continuing to munch on an unreasonable amount of eggs and... He is hitting on any woman he sees to an egregious amount. And I thought that he was, and I thought that he was a uh, focused on this one girl. It seems that he has plenty of eggs in many baskets. As I also glare literally at the back basket full of eggs in front of this guy. Yeah, it is. It is going continuously lower. And you see that the man behind the bar uh, kind of looks at him in ad- admiration. But uh, if you want to understand that admiration more, I would need an insight check. Yeah, I was going. I'm going to go approach the bar and ask everyone and ask him what does everyone see in this man that he's so well liked or well looked highly upon. And the the man behind the bar just says. Well, I'm always impressed by anyone that can shovel down that many eggs. Huh. It's quite the... I I guess it's quite the feat. I'm not sure if many stomachs can handle that many. But other than that, he's a bit of an asshole. Yes, I can also see that. Is he always this proud of himself? Unfortunately, yes. And then he just kind of sighs and continues cleaning his mug. And he just says, hey, one of these days I hope he'll get his comeuppance, but it has unfortunately not happened yet. Maybe after he goes and takes on that creature for that quest, it'll hopefully teach him a thing or two. Yes, but we wouldn't want him to die. Says no, no, just horribly maimed. I don't like that answer very much, but 
Suppose that if you don't like him, we, I can't change your opinions of him. I said, I look, I want to go back over to Professor X and be like, well, what do you think? Should we help Dalton or should we help one of the other people on the quest board? You are welcome to uh, change to another quest. But I am hard set on this one. I um, do not wish for the treasure. I don't think to be the other one, I'm sure. But I will continue with this one. Who don't? These people don't even have anything to offer, which is why I wish to help. So I have a plan to make him uh, go with us. We're gonna have to find uh, the father to try and at least fake raise the price so that he can actually go on the quest. I don't think this is a matter of price. I think it's a matter of him having claim over a girl. I mean, he also did say this raise the price. And uh, as you were talking about this, you see a person in a trench coat Come and pin one more quest on the board. And then gonna, he sneaks out. I'm going to go over and read this quest. It says, yeah. And it just says, looking for information on a missing journalist. Please report anymore? any info. Please post any information into an envelope and slip it uh into a nearby box that is described that is like around the corner and on street level and he said you will be rewarded with plenty of help in the future and whatever means i may be able to provide and it lists the uh the journalist's name as uh May Nielsen. Did we have to get the daughter's name? Uh, you have not. But uh, if you ask, it's it, it would come up as Isabel. Alright. Well, I ask and I get Isabel. Yeah. How do I get a last name? Uh, Isabel Goldston. Well, quite a bit of, I'm still, I'll follow your lead. You pick the quest. I will gladly follow you on it. I do really want to help those, uh, um, that mother and her daughter, but I don't think we can do anything about him. <laughs> I just look over at Dalton. What's he doing this time? Uh, he is doing a one-handed handstand and trying to do some level of push-up with it and surprisingly doing it pretty well. Hmm. Great. Uh... So I don't think that would work. I'm still kind of uh I'm still kind of tempted to go see what's in the sewers. If you want to go to the sewers, then let's go. Uh yeah, I think we should go to the sewers. I'm going to go and get Sasha. Uh it's sh Oh yeah. So you go and grab Sasha who seems to be very eagerly uh looking at a few members of this establishment. We have decided to go investigate the creatures in the sewers. Would you like to join us? Wait, sewers? Why would yes. we go into the sewers? Well, there's uh, creatures in the sewers that need to be taken out and it will give us good, it would probably give us a good reputation within the town if we investigate. She kind of just thinks to herself, like, I don't want to be known in this town. 
And then she kind of looks up too. What other quests were there? Well, we can help that blowhard in the corner, and I gesture over to Gus to uh, Dalton. Dalton, yeah. Although it's not, I, I'm I'm pretty sure you're pretty on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we can help that blowhard in the corner as I gesture to Dalton, and um, or we can find a journalist that has gone missing. And then the yeah, I look over at Dalton, and then I looked over, at, I look back up at you, and I'm just like, he looks like he's into challenges. You could try to challenge him for the quest. No, it's not that we will challenge him for the quest. We are supposed to assist him on the quest, and I really don't want to assist him on the quest. He's not yeah. a good man. Yeah, but if you challenge him with an arm wrestling contest or something, and he puts the quest on the line, and we put up some gold or whatever, he'll probably take it, and if you win, then those three could go on that quest instead of him. If you think you're strong enough to take him. If not, that's fine. I don't want to feed his inflated ego any further than it already is. And by beating me, he might see me as lesser. But what if you beat him? Then he probably will go into a depressive funk. Not want to be doing anything. Which means we get the quest. And he gets his self-esteem back in line. I, just, I suppose it would be good to knock him down a peg or two. Sure, I will challenge him for the quest. All right. So, what are? How are you going to challenge him? Oh God, great question. I guess I suppose I will just pose an arm wrestling to him. This is oh. I am more than happy to take you on in arm wrestling. And he, like, rolls up his sleeve, and his veins look bigger than your eyeballs. Like, <laughs> and he, <laughs> his, his shirt is barely containing those arms. Hmm. I see I may have made a mistake, but no matter. <laughs> and he, like, slams his elbow on the table and puts his hand out. And he says, let us begin. No. <laughs> Uh, can I try to assist him with my uh, mage hand because uh, because I'm a gipsy, my mage hand is invisible. Okay. So can I use that to try to tip over uh, on um, our, our side? Uh, I'll, yeah, okay. I'll allow you to add a 1d4 to the roll with that mage awesome. hand. Awesome. So and I, then I, doing, I am uh, going to use my divination magic and make Dalton ultimately roll 8 for his strength. Okay. Uh, 9. All right, so am I just rolling a regular strength roll? Uh, yeah, you. so you can make an athletics check if you'd like. Oh, it's athletics, okay. Normal roll? Yeah. 22. Oh, that's oh, a crit. Yeah. A crit. You I just crit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. But wait, the divination. What did you do with the divination? I made Dalton roll a 9. <laughs> So divination unfortunately overrules your crit. No, not Dalton. The oh. big guy. Oh, okay. I I was no, uh, yeah. Dalton. I thought you were trying to sabotage your own teammate, which no, would have no, been no, fun. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Dishan, the mage hand that's invisible is from Professor S, aka Jason's. So, uh, because of his general abilities, but. Uh, Let's see what he rolls. Yep, you do beat him. You slam this, his arm to the table, and he looks up at you, furious. He is beyond pissed, and he draws his sword. Oh, I uh, draw I'm gonna my... cast calm emotion. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, does that have a contested roll? Uh, yes. They have to make a uh, saving. All right, saving throw. Uh, you manage to calm him down. He, he reaches for his sword, and then you, and then you immediately cast calm emotion, and then he just, you see him take a deep breath, and he just says, "My apologies. I am 
not used to losing. It's just wow. alright. There's no shame in it. So. And with losing, you can get better because you can learn from your mistakes. He immediately throws down uh, three gold as your reward for winning, and he stomps out of the hall. I pick up the gold and said, well, it's time to rescue that poor girl now, isn't it? He stops before his, uh, before his way out, and he says, no, I have laid claim to the woman. I said, well, I, but you lost. That was part of our deal. Are you sure you're even strong enough to be able to do this? You he lost arm, he like stares daggers at you. And he's just I, like, I, I, I am strong enough for anything. But not arm wrestling, it appears. And you see him just slam on a table. And if this were any less well-crafted of a table, it would shatter into pieces. But it seems to be an unreasonably sturdy table. It's almost as if they built it for keep him in check. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, he he says, "I never agreed to such terms." And he stop and he flings open the door and he says, "Enjoy your gold. I will rescue the princess, woman, whatever myself." I suppose we should beat him to it, shouldn't we? Yeah, at least he's got, at least we got him to get a move on. Uh, I start wheeling after him, but like yeah. you know, far behind so he doesn't see us and get angry. All right. If, yeah, I if, think we're gonna go do it against his against his demands. Okay, so this is the quest you are ultimately deciding on. All right. Yeah. Uh, at this point, it has become dark outside. Okay. You find your way into the city streets at night, and you wish to tail him, but under the cover of darkness and sneakily. That's a bad idea. I mean, what, what are we gonna do? Just be like, hey dude, what's up? Where are we going? No, well, sneakily is not a great idea because I am not great at Neither am I, but what other options do we have? Sure, we shall tell him quietly, or as quietly as we can. Alright, I need everybody to make a stealth check, and I know that Zinn is doing yeah. it at disadvantage. I hate you all, Rafe. <laughs> <laughs> oh! That's a three! <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's a little rough. Holy, I, I got a 20. What the heck? Uh, with that natural 20, I will allow Zin to re roll uh, as oh, part you. of your critical success. So I use my mental, uh, I try at least to use my mental powers to cloak um, everyone around so that we kind of just look like nothing uh, um, to people walking by. So, am I still rolling with disadvantage? Uh, you are still rolling at disadvantage, yes. Eleven. That's slightly better. And holy crap, I would have been a fail. A uh, well, it, well, oh, it, it is a crit fail. It is a crit it fail a because crit fail. you're rolling at disadvantage. Oh my god, I didn't... God. <laughs> so Dang you it. take the it, uh, entire extra roll you got and completely throw it down as you stumble down a set of stairs, falling and clanking to an echoingly loud amount and uh everybody in the town it feels like is just staring at you including dalton and he goes are you following me town guards town guards and he's just uh you see him run off shouting for the guards to take you into custody as he seems to be assuming that you were planning to harm him in some way Uh, oh, I suppose that we should explain our story if the guards do come. Uh, so are you just gonna like hang out waiting for the town guard to come back? I, I'm gonna try to cast the charm person. I think that'll work. Uh, on Dalton. Uh, to make him not yell at the guards. Uh, so He's already yeah. out of eyesight at this point. Yeah. Okay, well, we should probably go <laughs> quickly. Probably. 
All right, so you guys taking off? Yeah, we're taking off. All right, yeah. where, are you heading back to the uh, Adventurer's Hall, or are you planning to scour the city a bit more? Uh, let's scour the city. Let's scour the city think, a bit more. All right. I don't think it's a good idea to go back exactly where you were. All right, as you start scouring the city at night, uh, you're strolling around. It feels fairly safe as far as cities go. Um, this is a very large city, and you know from the overall layout, there is a central area with a ton of temples, and in those uh, that kind of branch out, and the city is based a lot around that. So there might be a uh, god or goddess of the grave uh, at the edge of that temple square that leads to the graveyard of the town, and the uh, crafters gods and gods of the forge would be going to the more crafter and merchant section of town and it sort of goes around based off of that as you start making your way through you find yourself among the city streets there are a few people out and about and you do hear that there is a uh, bit of noise in the distance as uh there are a few pubs and even a club that you know of that is open. Hmm. Do we ever figure out where we need to go to save the daughter? You have not. I think we should start with that. Yeah, uh, let's go to the club, I'm sure they know something. <laughs> Alright, so you're heading to the club. Uh, the club... From what you can tell as far as sounds go, it's going to be, uh, oh wait, probably helps if I zoom out for everybody watching. So you can tell from the club that it is probably in this area as far as sound. Um, and what's everybody's passive perception? Uh, good question. You got a 16. Uh, 12. 12. Okay. Uh, so nobody with the 12s notices, but the 16, you notice there is a dark figure moving around the rooftops. Like, are they moving fast or kind of slow? Uh, they seem to be skulking. Uh, but they are fairly quick, but still somehow in stealth. But you are very familiar with the ways of stealth, as you have such a background in rogueness. So uh, you are very familiar with how people tend to move when trying to be stealthy. And soon after you start making your way towards the club, you probably make your way around this point and uh sasha you wind up seeing this cloaked figure uh up here but then they somehow jump across the rooftops and are over here and then all of a sudden you hear a scream from around the corner I'm going better... to run down the... Are we, do we all hear the scream? Yeah, it is very loud. Yeah, I'm going to go immediately investigate the source of the scream. Is there a way easily up to the rooftops? Not easily, unless you have a climbing speed of some sort. Oh, it's a good thing that um, I immediately... Well, due to my class, well, my racial thing, I have gem flight. Okay. So I'm just going to immediately sprout my wings and I'm going to fly up to the rooftops. Well, you're Wait, not you aware of it. Yeah, you're not aware of it yet. Oh, you're not aware? Oh, I heard oh, yeah. the scream. All right. Oh, yeah, you, you heard the scream. The scream. And yeah, the, the, the scream is the just outside the club as well. As you see, oh, okay. this person caught in a snare and hanging upside down. All right, I'm going to go up to the uh, source of the scream. And I'm going to see them. You see this man, and uh, he's a very large man, but he's hanging upside down. And then uh, you hear 
another person suddenly f- fall into a large set of boxes and crushing them and yells on the way down off of the rooftops as you s- as you look up see a dark figure suddenly dash into the darkness even further and obscuring him and i use acrobatics check to see if i can get up to the roof uh yeah make an acrobatics check see if you can vault your way up there That oh, is, the, yeah, with a critical a success. To, that, there's a lot of crits to this session. Rolling so well this session. Oh, yeah, when, when you guys get in combat, I'm sure you're going to be screwed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you remember when he says at the end of his videos, he's hoping that he would get three natural 20s? <laughs> yeah, in all of my videos, I wish everybody three nat 20s in your next D&D session. You've oh, already yeah, used all of them. We've already used them all three nat 20s. Yeah. We've watched too many of your videos. <laughs> yes. Uh, and we've saved them up. <laughs> uh, and uh, you vault up there and you see a... Uh, let me unobscure this area. Reveal area. And you see a cloaked man standing on top of this rooftop. And uh, he looks at you and says, I have no quarrels with you. I can say in a more pleasant voice, like, so what are you doing up here? Says, uh, says, what needs to be done? Okay, I'm confused. So, I wonder who this is. What does that <laughs> yeah. mean? Yeah, right? <laughs> so, what needs to be done? Says, so, uh, and he looks at you, flares what appears to be some sort of cloak, and tries to. Uh, and starts moving away. If you want to pursue him, I am going to request that you roll initiative, but that is up to you. Uh, make sure to click your person before rolling initiative. Another crit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he does not roll very well. Uh, Shara! You are up first. You see him start to run in this general direction. A so question, real quick. No. Is there any like moisture in front of, it? like water, for Wa- instance, or no? like any type of like? That, has it rained here recently? So like, is the roof kind of wet? Uh, it has not rained here recently. No. Okay, I was scared. Um. Oh, uh, Zin, can you make a roll? I'm not sure why only some... I mean, I have the turn order, but make sure to click yourself and roll. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't... Like, I can't really select myself for some reason. That's so strange. I don't know what the hell's going on with your... Let's see. Yeah, I can't put myself in roll order. All right. Well, I will roll your person for you, and we can sort that out for next stream, but... In the meantime, I will roll your initiative. Thank you. Oh, well, pretty good. Yep, he rolled an 18. Dang. So, uh, so what do you wish to do, Shara? Or Sasha, sorry. Oh, you're good. I misspelled my name the first time. Oh, okay. In a hurry, so, um, how far away are they from me? Uh, they are currently to do 20 feet. I'm going to kind of just like casually walk up and be like, why are you running away from me? I'm just going to get like right here and not have any weapons drawn yet. I just have my book in my hand. And he says, uh, you don't need to be involved with what I'm doing. I'm just trying to figure out what you're doing. That's all. Just taking out the trash. And you suddenly notice that he is 
right next to a uh, rope that is just near his feet. I'm on a... Uh, so, like, it's just, is it not hanging down or anything? Uh, or... it, if you follow the, the rope, it seems to be going across the rooftop. And then you see another person hanging by their feet. like a person not trash <laughs> in some situations they're the same thing and unless you're going to make an attack that will be everything that you can do on your turn uh, that would be my turn all right next up is zin i'm going to ask the gentleman why is he being sued and why is he hanging upside down he he says i i don't know and he's just like flailing around uh, and you, you hear like coins dropping out of his pockets and he's just like, all I did was leave the damn club. Uh, <clears throat> can I roll insight on that? Cause the coins are kind of throwing me off. Uh, yeah, go for it. Come on. What the heck? This one to roll insight. Oh, there. Oh, well. Ooh, oh yeah uh, i failed <laughs> as far as you can tell this is the a very upstanding citizen that is being assaulted for no good reason all right then i'm gonna cut him down <laughs> you cut him down and he falls with a loud thud and as he stands up you notice he is a very large man as he is a goliath impressive how you got up there not many people hanging a goliath upside down by their feet he says, well, I guess with the right maneuvering and angles, and then he's trying to dust himself off, and he he just seems uh, utterly annoyed, but he starts trying to gather up his coins as quickly as possible. All right, you, you have a good night, sir. Says, I'm sorry about that. Says, Thank you. And he, as he finishes gathering up, he takes, him off, takes off as quickly as possible, and... Um, at that same time, Sasha, you notice this dark figure look in that direction as the rope gets slack. And he says, damn it, you let them get away. And the Goliath takes off running. And Zin, are you going to be doing anything else with your turn? I'm going to follow the rope. All right, you see the rope goes up to the rooftops over here. Then it goes across to over here, and then it is starting to come undone across this little art, this little opening, and it's like getting slack and starting to fall. Okay, then I'm gonna hop up on the roof and try to follow it. All right, uh, make an athletics check for climbing up to the roof. No, I'm gonna use the uh, oh flight. Yeah, so you you. Flap your wings and you get up there and you join Sasha and you see get the first look at this dark cloaked figure. And that will be everything for your turn. Professor S, it is your turn. You are still on the first floor, but all of your companions have gone to the rooftops. Okay. So I sigh, realizing I'm uh, forgetting I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> and I put both of my hands uh, to my temple then kind of uh, for all of the people nearby everything just kind of goes like like everything has like a bluish hue and okay. I stand up for my wheelchair and try to get with so if you're trying to head on up there uh, we're going to need you to make an athletics check Ooh, minus one maybe. Ew. Yeah, with that too, you start trying to climb up, but you are pretty frail, and you immediately slip and fall onto your back, and you're like, uh, uh, as the wind gets knocked out of you a little bit. Do you want to do anything else with your turn? Um, Why am I still cripple? <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna notice the um, guy on the uh, roof that seems to be confronting. Um, uh, I forgot your oh, I forgot your name. Sorry, Sasha. Uh, Sasha. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to cast hold person on uh, 
the vigilante looking person. All right, uh, go ahead. What what's your what's this save? Uh, uh, wisdom save fifteen. Wisdom fifteen. All right. He fails. He suddenly he as it's almost as if his cloak itself stops moving and he's just locked in place. I say enough, and then um I like I put my finger to my temple and then point um my other finger at him. All right, and then at that point it is his turn. I need to look up what hold person whether somebody can talk during hold person. No, because uh, they're paralyzed, and a uh, paralyzed creature can't be defeated. All right, so you see that he cannot talk. He is stuck there in place, and uh, he can't do anything. He was going to do plenty of cool shit, but no. <laughs> he is now held in place by the telepathic person. Yeah, no, my build is a debuff guy, not an actual fighting guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um... You guys do what you need to do. I'm just gonna be holding this guy down. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Would I be? He does there? get a wisdom save after all of his turns. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good point. He makes his wisdom save. He save and he still appears to be stuck in place. Sasha. He has a mask on, right? He does have a mask on. I'm just going to walk up to him and take it off. Uh, as you attempt to take it off, uh, you take one lightning damage. And it doesn't seem to be very easily removed. As you see a complete glare from him that would uh, intimidate a less hardy person. I kind of just stand there with my book out and just... And I'm going to pull out my rapier and just be like, this could have gone a lot easier if you actually just, you know, listened instead of being spooky. He looks at... He, all he can do is look at you, but you can tell he wishes he could say stuff. He's like, no. Alright, my turn now? Because I'm assuming you're just gonna... Yeah. Okay. I'm going to use my... Uh, I'm gonna use my telepathy, and I'm gonna speak to him in his mind. Like, <laughs> all of this could have been avoided if you had just answered us to begin with. He's just like, well, I don't know who you work for, and I know that they have been hiring contractors. I don't even know who you are. It says, I will speak to you and your companions if you swear that you will not do harm. I am a paladin. I have put an oath to protecting people. And I'm going to assume no that harm. you're right around here. Yeah, I'm right around there. I will do no harm if you promise to do no harm. Says, I do swear. Uh, and then I motion to uh, Professor S on the ground to release him from his binding. So you do that. And he is immediately relieved... You see him uh, imme immediately like take his cloak and put it around him so you can no longer see his hands and you can't see any part of his body with uh, very good insight as to what he's doing. But he stands there still and he says, uh, says I had no way of knowing who you were or what your intentions were, so you have to understand I understand completely. Says that pathetic little criminal has been putting out requests for help. And I thought that maybe you were hired by him. 
It was in all a matter of unfortunate circumstance. If I hadn't realized he was a criminal sooner, I would have acted a just. Says, well, you may not take my word, but I am willing to show you if you would help me in return. I, I seek justice and I will help take, I will uh, aid you in taking out this criminal if you aid me in the same. I look at the, uh, I look at, uh, Sasha and I kind of glance down at Professor S. He wants us to help him take out a criminal. Oh, what do you guys know. think? Uh, I telepathically speak to uh, both of you guys on say, uh, I'm assuming it's the criminal that you guys let me Maybe. I don't know. And if you're saying that telepathically, he has no uh, idea what you guys are talking about. So Yeah, we're, it's telepathic conversation. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to hear from down here from what I got. There's a criminal that we let free that we need to get. And uh, I was about to go get the criminal since I can't really get up there. But uh, we're all going to do that, so that would be great. So... Uh, I kind of look at him. What's in it for us? He says, well, besides justice, as he glares at you, says, I will reward you with my aid in the future. And he takes out a wand, and it uh, it seems to have a weird marking on it. And he says, I will reward you with this, and you will be able to seek my aid in your future endeavors. Uh, I'm gonna cast Detect Dawn to see what that wand is. Uh, he, you, you, as you cast Detect Thoughts, you feel as though it's like almost too easy, and you're immediately guided to the appropriate uh, thoughts, I guess. It's it's almost like a big flashing sign that's like, this is what you're looking for. I somehow don't trust that, but I will continue. Yeah. You see that this, uh, this particular wand is inscribed with one charge per day of Skyrite. Hmm. The Skyrite spell is specifically designated to have a particular symbol that's projected, and it will request aid from a local vigilante. I, uh, I, I guess I would reach over and I would take the wand from his hand. As you attempt to reach deal. over, he uh, snatches it back away. He says, you get, you get this when we take out that that terrible club. Can you just call him what he is, a man? Maybe a man made a couple mistakes, but it's still a man. Says, Stop calling him a criminal and scum and trash. He says he is destroying this city with drugs and it just for his own profits. He still doesn't give you the right to make him less than he is. He is not a devil. No matter how much he acts like one. No, he is a rare type of Kenku. And I don't mind the Kenku, but he is quite vile. Is that then racist? Uh, <laughs> we don't know what his name is. <laughs> Sorry, he is Dark Cloak Man racist. <laughs> he is uh he he doesn't seem to necessarily have a problem with the fact that he's a kenku but he does seem to be particularly pissed at this particular kenku you have my word this kenku shall be dealt with uh and, and I, the the commenter yes. xavier uh, you're pretty damn spot on with most of your observations uh what were you saying zin um <clears throat> You have my word. I will help you take this Kenku out once and for all. And I kind of like show him kind of 
give him my word, you know. He looks you up and down and says, Very well. But don't kill him. Wait, so you strung him upside down. Oh, the, no, the, the man that was strung. Yeah, oh, wait. The... oh, wait, yeah. Okay. Why? Because you're all about justice. He says, I needed information. All right, fair enough. But with a strong enough force, I can avoid the information because I was only looking for the best entry points into the club to help sabotage their operations. Um, I could just take, like, just bring me to him. I could just take whatever information you want out of his mind. Well, that Goliath is long I gone. <laughs> I mean, like, I, okay, uh, I mean, like, uh, like anyone you need. I could just the people's the mind defenses are not as strong as mine. Uh just anyone you need, I'll just take it from them. <laughs> okay. Uh well you would have to find your way into the club in order to find someone that would be that would have enough knowledge to you for you to be able to like pluck those thoughts out of their mind all right well uh well uh sir what's your name talking to yeah the Batman. yeah he he says uh he's he looks at in your general direction and just says i am the knight and just flares his cloak and Throws down a smoke bomb, and all of a sudden you can't really see him much anymore. And he says, find your way into the club. I will block any entrances from the outside. All right. I'm going to go. And he disappears. All right. Let's go. Nice guy. All right. The Knight's a stupid name, though. <laughs> yeah. Why is his name the Knight? Yeah, he's, he's still early in his vigilanteism. At this point, mm. and hasn't quite come up with a good moniker. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, we're going to. Uh, I guess we should uh, find a way into this club. Okay. I'm just going to walk through the front entrance. I was about yeah. to say, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, probably going to gonna... cover the back entrance. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to walk in. So you find this sort of like back alley type of entrance, uh, and I really want to make sure that. Uh, Zin, or Professor S, are you able to move yourself around at this point? Yeah. Okay. Zin, can you, like, drag your character sheet on, or dra drag your character onto the board and see if that fixes it so you're able to control him yourself? Otherwise, I'm more than happy to move him around. You just gotta tell me where. I just hope uh, I cannot drag him around. Uh, if I remove it, but then if you go to your, like, this little thing and you see the, uh, you see your, like, Zin Talagaf name under the journal section, you should be able to drag that whole journal of yours onto the sheet and it'll pop up with, yeah. Yeah, there it is. And now you can move it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So you see two guards outside of what appear to be this club entrance. It is not a very well-marked club, but there is definitely noise coming from inside. And you do see there is somebody passed out near, uh, just to the side uh, over here. And um, they are passed out, but they don't smell a booze. They just completely look like zonked out of their mind. They're definitely on some sort of substance. And there's two guards outside and they're looking at you up and down. What would you like Hello. to do? Uh, we would like to get into the club. And uh, one of them has a, has a chart in front of him and he just says, are you on the list? Uh, I'm gonna cast uh, Charm Person on him. Okay. Uh, wisdom save 15. Wisdom save 15 from the random guard outside. Uh, 
he doesn't look to he doesn't seem to be any more friendly towards you than you would expect I'll chime in and be like oh we just got into town and we heard this was a great place to this is great place to what and he looks at you very suspiciously as he's reaching for his mace on his side what do you what do you think we're going to do in the club uh and he says well it depends on what you know of this club we know nothing of this club but we have just arrived down yes i know it is a club and i know it looks cool to be in there so we want to get in there hey he looks and he's just like be on your way And he just kind of tries to, like, shoo you away, and that's... See if I can spell my way out of this. See if you can spell your way. I have my own plan. Well, please, because none of these really... I'm going to step forward, and I am going to use my breath weapon. <laughs> okay. Alright, All right, And go. I'm going to yell at them, STAND ASIDE! And boom, <laughs> hit them with a wave of force. Yeah, alright, you, you do that. Uh, what, uh, it's a DC, it's a dexterity saving throw of 12. I think it's a cone of 15 feet. Yeah, that's going to blast the crap out of the doors and, ba and blast the hell out of both of them. Uh, they're going to be rolling a disadvantage because they weren't expecting you to just suddenly blast the crap out of them. And I was going with like diplomacy thing. Okay, I guess we're doing combat. <laughs> yep, yeah, so you blast open the doors. And when you do so, I want you to roll initiative. Okay. So make sure to click yourself and uh, do that. Let me make sure. There we go. These doors blast open. <laughs> And you see... Uh, do I even uh, need to roll damage on them? Uh, well, I they do have stat blocks, so yeah. Uh, okay. um, it's 2d10, I believe. All right, 2d10. Go for it. Right. So okay. if you need to just do slash roll space 2d10. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good roll. You blast both of them for 18 damage, and you completely obliterate the door. Cool. <laughs> yes, Nodishan, it went from 0 to 100 very fast. <laughs> uh, I'm only looking at him and be like, you are completely stupid. Uh, let's see. what. Well, we got in, didn't we? Uh, I was going... We wanted the diplomacy route, <laughs> not, you know, breath weapon route. <laughs> Well, Think with your head sometimes, not what's between your legs. <laughs> they clearly weren't going to let us in. I simply... I simply advanced our... It, I'd simply hastened our advance. But you didn't have to blow well, open the door, wait. too. So, yeah, you deal 18 damage, and... Then we're going to make sure we get them included on initiative rolls. Where is my little sheet? There we go. There's that one. Oh, it might help if I actually click them first. There we go. Because I need to follow my own rules. There we go. Since you blasted open the doors as well, some other people are joining in. So, uh, as the doors immediately blast open and you deal 18 damage to both of them, as that was, uh, they were not prepared and both rolled at disadvantage. Now it is. Next up is going to be Sasha. So they're still alive in the front, right? They are still alive. Uh, they're very shocked at what just happened, but they are very alive. 
and you do hear very, very loud music blasting from inside. And when the doors blast open, a uh, group of patrons come storming out. Uh, but it seems like they're just trying to get out of whatever I let chaos them, is happening. I let them. I let the patrons escape. Yes. Get out. She kind of just sighs, pulls out her uh, rapier, and she's just going to go stab the guard that's right in front of her. <laughs> All right. Uh, go for it. What kind of rogue are you, by the way? Assassin. All right. So you managed to do that. Uh, you are going on the first turn, which I know is some sort of bonus, but you, you they... always hurt surprise creatures when you have advantage versus creatures who haven't acted. Ah, okay. Cool. So go for it. Do I have advantage or no? Uh, they have not acted yet. They are still... They are no longer surprised, though, because they did just get blasted. Okay, I was just making sure. Yeah. Because if I had advantage and everything, then I would do the sneak attack, but I don't, so... Yeah. And unfortunately, the uh, paladin is five feet too far away. All right, and uh, you do manage to... He is still reeling back, and then you stab him in his gut. And you see just this little spurt of blood. His rapiers are very thin, but still know how to hit just the right spots. Dealing five points of damage to the one on the left. So the two... Both players behind me can't see my face, right? No. But the two guards can. Correct. As I stab him, you just see a sadistic smile come out of my face. Okay. Uh, one of them looks pretty... The one that just got stabbed looks pretty uh, scared by that. He's not completely in a frightful mode or frightened as a status, but he does look like he's one step away from shitting his pants. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and that will be my turn, basically. Okay. Uh, Professor S... It is your turn. So, uh, are all of the guards within 120 feet? Uh, you can only see uh, this one. You cannot see this guard around here because he's around a corner. But you can see three guards within 120 feet of you, yeah. Okay, so um, I say this problem shall not be solved in the matter of the body, but shall, uh, but shall be... Uh, uh, but shall be fixed in the matter of the mind. And um, I cast slow on uh, all of them. Okay. So Do you need to... to see people for slow? Uh... Because if you don't, then you can actually hit four people instead of three. If they just need to hear you, then you can hit four. I can look it up really fast if needed. It. Uh, it, it just says uh, up to six pieces of your choice in a 40 plus speed within range. Uh, do, do, do. So, I guess everyone. Oh uh, yeah, you can you can hit all of them. Cool. So, uh, and that is a wisdom saving throw. Okay. So first one fails. Second one fails. Third one passes. Fourth one fails. So you uh, can feel in your mind that. All except for this one are slowed. Okay. So I say your breath weapon should have more of it now because they have disadvantage on this day. Yeah, so now they have minus two AC and uh, minus two to all deck saving throws. And they can't use reactions. And on their turn, they can either take an action or bonus action, but not both, regardless of the creature's abilities or magic items. Cool. To, and if they attempt I, to cast a spell, bad stuff happens. Yeah, so uh, that's gonna be my turn. All right, that was a pretty good use of of uh, putting them at a disadvantage of a lot of things. So now it is this wise turn, who comes around five ten. Yeah, uh, as he comes around the corner. He immediately sees that you're stabbing his friend slash partner and goes for you. Uh, what is your AC? 
nope. I am gonna use my reaction because she's within five. She's within ten feet of me. Okay. Because I'm protector fight, protector paladin. Okay. I'm gonna throw my shield up in front, and he now I think is a disadvantage. He is now a disadvantage. All right. So, tries to swing. Uh, is I always forget. Is is it just for one attack, or is it for the whole turn? While wielding a shield and a creature you can see within attacks on the target within five feet of you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack. Okay, so it's just for the first attack. Disadvantage. Yeah, uh, yeah that immediately... He, You see him swinging, and it's like he's swinging in slow motion, and you very easily dodge out of the way, and you're just kind of looking like, ah, uh, really? That That's it? Okay. And... Uh, let me make sure I'm not missing anything from the. Uh, if the creature attempts to cast spell, blah blah blah. Uh, can't. Oh, and it can only make one melee attack because of slow. So, <laughs> yeah, he's done. Dang, uh, nice. Awesome. Damn that slow. All right, and then this one comes running up, sees that it's very clustered over there, and goes for the paladin. Attacks once. What is your AC? 19. Uh, misses on the first attack. Swings one more time with his mace, and you just bash it off your shield like this is nothing. Cool. And Zin, you're up. I'm going to slash the guy who just attacked me. Go for it. All right, so... Will the 16 hit? Yes. You cut deep into his shoulder, and All right, six he is not cool with damage. him. Minus six. All right. Uh, you see a spurt of blood, and it just, oh, like, oh, sprays up into the, into the that was, sky. That's the first and the second hit is nine damage and six damage. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you chop down, you see some blood, and then you slice through, and it just splurts all over and it's it's like watching uh like an old kung fu movie with how much blood is splurting everywhere and now it is time for a slowed creature's turn uh what is your ac sasha i forget again it's a 15 15 it will hit unless nope yeah i'm using snowboy barks so i'm as he's about to hit me, I'm like, oh, that won't do. <laughs> and I'm going to cast Silver Bird, so he has to make the roll again. All right. Yeah, he still passes. Okay. Yep, and he smashes into you, dealing. Oops. My dice goes on the ground. Ten bludgeoning damage. Okay. And that is the only attack he's allowed to make because he is slowed. Oh, DM, I also sent you a message real quick because I didn't know if, because I technically was trying to use uh, my divination magic to make when they were doing the arm wrestling contest on him, but then you rode behind the seat still. So oh, yeah. I didn't know if I still had that. You you, you used uh, one of... Oh, no. It, you saw what he was going to do, so no, you still have both of your rolls okay. for your divination. All right. Uh, and... The other one is going to be swinging at you. He misses. Use... Oh, never mind then. Yeah. <laughs> he tries to swing and it's like coming. It, everything's just coming at you in slow motion and your dexterity is so high that you're like, all right, seriously, just come on. And you're just dodging it left and right like it's nothing. And Sasha, you're up. I'm going to basically take the rapier that I just stabbed the guy with mm -hmm. and then I'm going to stab him again with it. Yeah, you just try to drive it deeper. Uh, go ahead and make your attack. Yeah, that's definitely going to hit. You don't even pull it out of place. You just kind of thrust and wiggle it around and you can feel some, some sort of bone that you're hitting and you're like, ah, that feels a little weird. And uh, you deal an additional how many? <laughs> and how much damage do you deal? Let's see. 
You can just click the rapier on the actual chat window. Oh, I don't know why it forced me to do that. Uh, that's that's a interesting error code. Cool. Uh, are you able to click your attack button or no? Oh, no. no, I'm not. I'll just roll again, but does take that damage because I guess I accidentally turned off all the roll damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, go for it. So you deal 10 piercing damage as you wiggle around in his guts and uh, start chipping away at a bone. That is. I'm still smiling <laughs> as I'm stabbing him, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he is looking real, real rough. Uh, he. he coughs up a significant amount of blood onto you. If only you were able to use your sneak attack by b having somebody a little closer. Uh, Professor right. S, you are up. Who, can I tell to see like which person has the, oh wait, which one's not slowed? The only one that is not slowed is the uh, one next to Zin. Okay, so I'm going to cast Tasha's Mind uh, so, uh, so, he has to make an uh, intelligence uh, saving throw of 15, or take 2 to 6 damage. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and roll that damage. Uh, they're, they're common thugs. They're not super smart. So just do slash roll space 3d6. Uh, you can just roll, type in to the roll 20 chat box and just do slash okay. roll. All right, uh, 10 damage. That is a good amount of damage against him. So six. And then, uh, uh, it also can't take it a reaction until the end of its next turn. Also, also, uh, Turn, it has to choose whether it gets to move an action or a action. No, we get one of the three. Okay, so it, it, it pretty closely has the same effect as slow, but just... Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let me make sure... Yeah, so uh, I kind of put my fingers uh, to my temples, and then a blast of purplish, bluish energy hits him in the head, and then, uh, yeah. Okay. That works very well. Um, and next up is this one who is currently slowed. And it's coming at you. Uh, but I, I think Zen already used his reaction. So. Yeah. Uh, we got. Oh, that is a high rule. So with 13. You take 13 points of bludgeoning damage as a mace slams into your side. Ooh. Uh, no, into S Sasha's. I used my divination to roll the nine. But... Uh, yeah, then you then uh, it's almost like you saw that it was about to hit, and then you suddenly was like, no, nah, I don't like that reality, and your divination basically chose a different timeline. And all of a sudden... He he goes a little too high, and you're able to dodge it entirely. All right. And that's the one turn they're allowed to take. Next is the one attacking Zin. Smashes into your shield. Awesome. And, and uh, you can't. He can't do crap. Then cool. Zin, you're up. All right. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna use my longsword against him. Okay. 17. Yeah, that's definitely going to hit for 7 damage. 7 damage. So I've been messing up. Whoops. And then I'm going to use my second attack, also longsword, against him. Go for it. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> definitely going to chop pretty deep. <laughs> As you slash into him, you hear this cry of pain. And he is just, uh, he's starting to look a little rough, but not as rough as his friend that's being attacked by the rogue. Great. Uh, next up is the, is this one who is going to make its way. No, he's not he's not that stupid. He was about to get like right in the middle of both of you, but no, he's gonna attack the rogue as well. Ugh. But as he's going to swing, he the shower of blood from his nearby friend is just coating the hell out of his hand. And he goes to swing overhand and his mace goes flying. And it smashes into the boxes next to Professor S. And he is currently unarmed. As he crit failed. Nice. Wow. <laughs> Next up is this one. The one that's right in front. That's being stabbed repeatedly. Uh, we have a, an attack for 16 coming. I'm going to use uh, my lucky feature. Alright. Uh, go for it. They just have to reroll. Basically it's at disadvantage at that point. Uh, yep, he misses on the re-roll, and uh, you manage to dodge out very easily. Awesome. Yes, I love to throw in plenty of very uh, gruesome but uh, things that make sense, especially for crit fails, and when you're covered in blood, bad stuff happens. Shara, you are up. No, I've made a mistake, but I'm going to roleplay this perfectly. Okay. She kind of just looks at the guy, and she's just like, I hope you know I've been going easy on you this entire time. Because with the rogue feature, I could gain advantage on attacks as a bonus action when you are not, when you are motionless. Ah, okay. Which means I get my stink attack damage too, right? Yes. So I'm going to use that. I'm just going to jam my rapier even further. All right. Yeah, uh, you still have the rapier, like, it's basically already gone through him, but then you pull it out just enough, so, and then re-angle it to drive up into his body cavity, and you feel a slight pop as it pierces his heart, and you, you see his eyes immediately just go wide, and then go lifeless, and he slides backwards off of your rapier and dies. I still have that very sadistic smile on my face since the two behind me can't see my face yet. Yeah, and the, the blood is dripping off your rapier as you're standing there. And uh, Professor S, you're up. I'm a bit concerned being around this person. Well, I mean, as far as, you're con as, far as for you can yeah. see, they're just normally attacking and defending their party. Yeah, me, Jason, is scared of this <laughs> right now. Uh, but I'm going to Uh, I still don't want to kill people, so I'm going to cast a uh, major image okay. uh, to make myself look grotesque, eldritch, like a grotesque, eldritch nightmare. Okay. And say, um, and say, you will not speak of this. You, uh, you will run, you will stop, and you will never speak of it again. All right, make a, let's see. Uh, that'd be intimidation. Yeah, that'd be an intimidation check, and do so at advantage because they were not expecting to see some sort of terrible eldritch horror. Nineteen. Nineteen will definitely do it for one of them, two of them, and uh, the third one. Uh, yep, yeah, they, they they're all three scared out of their minds uh they have all received the frightened debuff at the moment and uh they appear to want to run inside do i hear attack of opportunity you do hear attack of opportunity as uh <laughs> this one starts heading this way uh 
Sasha, right. you are welcome to make an attack of opportunity, uh, but you unfortunately don't get advantage on it. Right, that's fine. It's minus big, yeah. Uh, so you deal four piercing damage as you slash at the back of him uh, as he's trying to run away. Um, just because I like the way you're role-playing it, I will allow you to roll at disadvantage if you want to target a very specific body part. Okay. So, do you want to try and target a, a body part, or yeah, I'm going to try and target a body part. All right, because I still have my second divination. <laughs> okay, so, so you... I'm going to roll that 19 now. All right, so you hit for sure. What body part would you like to target? Let me target him right, like the ligament is right behind his knee. <laughs> right, below, right behind his knee. Knee. knee? Oh, when okay. He's running away. I'm kind of like going down to a knee. Yeah. And I'm slashing at those ligaments. Okay, and he, you just hear him say, Oh my god, finally an attack to the knee. And he falls down, and he says, I always heard it was an arrow, but I never thought it would be a rapier. And he falls, and he is currently prone. Right. Uh, gang up on him. Yeah, but he takes that four piercing damage. He is not, that's the first damage he's actually taken. Uh, the next one is going to attempt to run away. Feel free to make your attack of opportunity. All right. Um, will a 12 hit? Uh, considering... Let's see. Yes, it does hit because of the minus two AC. He takes four damage. Four damage. Yep. He nice. is looking really rough. Uh, and now on um, now it is your turn uh, I'm going to step forward and I'm going to take two attacks uh, one on the blue guy and then one on the guy alright go ahead and move forward and do those attacks alright first one since now he can see my face too if he looks to my right I just have like just a normal face now okay uh so I'm trying. There it is. All right. Well, 15 to hit one guy. Well, 20 to hit him, but that's unnatural. So seven slashing damage. Uh, yeah, you manage to. Um, you you going for brutality, or are you going just for a clean kill, or are you going for non-lethal? Uh, non-lethal. Non-lethal. You slash at his back, and he falls to the ground, and he's kind of just whimpering but he's bleeding very slowly but you can tell he is out of the fight for sure all right and then uh the second one is 14 okay uh 14 hit. will hit especially with and that then, minus two and then six slashing damage six slashing damage all right he is uh looking pretty rough he is frightened beyond all all reason and He's going to try to run away. Both of you are welcome to make opportunity attacks, and you get your sneak attack damage because there's somebody within range of you. I'll, I'll make my attack first. All right. As I make my attack after. Uh, 15, three slashing damage. Yep, that's going to hit. And Sasha. 22. 20, damn it. 22, Jesus. That is that is uh that's a uh, pretty good that's that's pretty good uh yeah you you uh I'm assuming based off of your role playing so far that you were going pure lethality and brutality. Yep. Yeah, you see him turn to run, and as he turns, it's like he looks at your way for just a split second on the turn, and you get the rapier right in his eye, and you feel the. the the rapier bend ever so slightly with the thinness of the blade as it hits the back of his skull and he drops to his knees barely at a slightly reduced rate of falling due to the fact you're slightly holding him up with your rapier. Okay. I would appreciate it if I'm kept alive. <laughs> 
trying to kill me. Pardon my excessive force. So you, the only one that, uh, one is completely unconscious and bleeding. One is completely, uh, two are completely dead in brutal ways. And the last one is on the ground, bleeding from the back of his knee and crying out in pain, but still completely conscious. Uh, well, I know what I'm doing next. Uh, I'm going inter- to, I'm going to, I'm going to interrogate him. Uh, yeah, you, okay. you would if it was not Sasha's turn oh, first. Sasha. Great. <laughs> oh, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, no. and, and since he is prone, you automatically have advantage, so go for it. 22 with a 16 damage. Yeah, so that definitely hits. Uh, he had not taken a ton of damage beforehand, so he you stab down into his stomach, and you like grabs for it and he's like oh my god <laughs> and then uh then it's professor s's turn who currently i'm also going to just make a comment be like you should your buddy should have just let us in when we ask nicely <laughs> and it's professor s's turn who looks like a giant terrible monstrosity so um i well, uh, I, uh by the way you can see like a blue everyone uh can see, like a bluish hue kind of so I fly out from my chair. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, like, I'm floating. So, so I'm walking. I'm gonna uh, here, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, all of the tentacles are going to wrap up into me, uh, like, back up into me, and I'm going to be my normal self. Uh, I'm gonna crouch down to him um, and try to uh, cast calm emotion. All right, he he looks uh, fairly calm, all things considered. He's no longer frightened, but uh, he is not in great shape. And uh, because I think this is how it works, because he, I cast it at a higher level, I'm also going to cast it at Sasha, who seems to be murder happy right now. Okay, uh, I mean. He, you would need, uh, make an insight check versus Sasha's deception check and see how well you can tell if she is bloodthirsty. I rolled a 22 deception. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you don't FBI think. I guess. Yeah, as far as you can tell, Sasha is just, you know, making sure that the party is well defended. All right. Well, um,. I still don't have any lower uh, spell slots available, so I still use that uh, high one. Uh, and I say, can we all please just hold down? Uh, can, uh, can we all please just calm down? I believe we were going to ask you a couple of questions. Maybe move you to a different location. And I'm looking at everyone, like, don't kill him. He's I'm, I I'm clearly am not killing. <laughs> yeah, he he looks up and he's he's still scared, although he is unreasonably calm at the moment. Um, and he's just kind of like I, I I I'll tell you whatever you need, but I don't know what you what do you want. And he's like barely remaining conscious as he is bleeding pretty profusely from his stomach. Okay, so with that, I'm going to use uh, Lay on Hands, and I'm going to do uh, 10 hit points with my Lay on Hands on him. Okay, you bring him to uh, not so bad. He he looks like he is, you know... My rapier is still in his stomach, by the way. Yeah, (laughs) it's it's like this wound is trying to close, but the rapier is kind of blocking that. And it, it stops bleeding, though, interestingly enough. So he's still in pain, but at least he's no longer at risk of dying. If you could come with me, um, we have someone that I'd like you to meet. And I'm like, uh, I'm just like, I ball like everyone, like, come on, come on. Um, I'm going to and... pick this dude up and toss him over your shoulder. So you pick him up, toss him over your shoulder. Um, and just a reminder... The vigilante that was 
requesting your help was in the process of just making sure that the doors are blocked so nobody else can get out of this place. You don't know where he went. True. You're welcome to question this person, but uh, you, you see into this club, by the way, now that you've gotten closer, that there is a door over here leading to the main parts of the club, as well as doors here, here, and here. Okay. Well, um, I say we should uh, tie him up, perhaps, and uh, leave him here until we can find um, the knife. Uh, but I say we keep him alive uh, for further questioning, since we uh, don't really know what he asked of him just yet. Agreed. All right, so I guess we tie him up and uh, put him on the um, like. I'm going to request the blade is removed from his stomach. <laughs> okay. I kind of just locate him, and I don't remove it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to remove it. <laughs> make hand to remove it. So I have a grip on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you feel that resistance on the mage hand, and mage hands don't have as much strength as in physical hand, so it's just kind of there, and you're kind of in this weird standoff. I'm going to go in and use it with my, remove it with my actual hand. Okay. You pull it away, and uh, thank you for the sub, Roberto, uh, and... As you pull it out of his stomach, you see the wound finally close, although it's very obvious that this person is still damaged. They don't seem to want to go anywhere. They look completely exhausted from the battle. We'll leave him here. Bring him for questioning. Uh... Would you, uh, would you, uh, mind stay still? Um, stay still for a uh, while until we come back to you? He says, yeah, I, they don't pay me enough for this. Uh, did we, uh, from Devin, did, uh, did, uh, he split up the gold, uh, for each of us? Oh. Like, uh, did we each gain one more gold because of Devin? Or, yeah. Uh, did it all go to if you want, I can give you guys the gold. You know, you guys all get one more gold. Okay, so I give him a uh, gold key. Um, and I uh, say, okay, um, let's uh, move forward. Into the club. Okay, so you, you make your way into the club. This man is kind of collapsed on a box nearby. I kind of look at him and be like, how much does your boss pay you? I'm kind of more of a cheerful self again. He says, uh, he pays us about a silver a night. Would you be willing to work for me for three gold pieces a month? And you see him start trying to, like, calculate. is silver a night. <laughs> yeah, you see, him, you see him start trying to, like, calculate in his head, and then he, like, is thinking so hard he just passes out. <laughs> Due to the, his injuries being healed and unhealing and not being good at math, <laughs> he's like, you just offered I'll him take a that silver yes. <laughs> Just offered him a silver a night. I know I did, but I knew he wasn't smart either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you guys start making your way into the club. You can hear there's still quite a lot of loud music. I'm actually going to clean off the blood off of me first before I walk into this club. That's probably That's a, a safe bet. Yeah. We're all going to do that, and I'm going to sheath my rest? sword again. Yeah, should we take a short rest while we uh, do all of this? I mean, if you're uh, planning to just wait outside this club for an hour, hoping that nobody notices you. I, mean, I could go hide. <laughs> how long will it take? How long will it take for... Uh, um, it, uh, how long would it take for blood? To clean the blood, it, I mean, you can wipe yourself off, or if you have prestidigitation, it would only take a moment. Oh, perfect. Uh, I'll 
perfect. I have that. Yeah, prestidigitation allows you to clean yourself very quickly with an action. So. And it's a cantrip, so I don't even have to worry about wasting my silly barbs. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do that. Ooh. I have a question for you. Okay. Would you count... Okay, well, I guess... Never mind. I just read the thing. I was going to ask you if I could use shaped water on blood, but it's water. Yeah. <laughs> it's it is. Specifically water in the, uh, the information. Never mind. So, uh, you guys are making your way in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you make your way in, you see you smell a familiar smell if you've ever been exposed to any sort of drugs in this world. Uh, and most of them tend to be, you know, more mild when you're exposed to certain types of drugs. But this is like really hard stuff, like the stuff you don't want to mess around with. So they... Uh, you can definitely, it's almost like walking into the equivalent of an opium den. But you can also hear loud music and plenty of, uh, cheering at random intervals, similar to what you would expect from a casino. What was that? Uh, we're looking for a kenku, right? Yes, yes. There is some sort of uh, kenku that is leading this place. All right. So um, I kind of just scan about to, to like look for the kenku. Um, see, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, you don't see anything in this first entryway, but you do see the like main doors to the club here, as well as a few side doors. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna head over into the main club because that's probably where we're gonna see the most. All right. Yeah. So you see the large double doors, and are you just barging in? Or are you? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna open them. I'm not gonna barge in. All right. Open them normally, not blast them off their hinges. All right, so as you open, it seems to be a large room uh, with a ton of patrons in there, all of which are doing plenty of gambling and risking all types of amounts of gold. And I accidentally revealed a spot that I didn't want to. Is there a way we can roll? I'm trying to scroll. Sent to the map page. Little mouse button. Uh, yeah, and you should be able to... There's actually, like, scroll bars at the bottom of the browser. Yeah, no, my scroll bars don't, like... There it is. For some reason, I have to zoom all the way in. Swagmaster, thank you for the follow. And, uh... Alright, so did, did you manage to sort it out? Yeah. Cool. So... You make your way in, and uh, nobody's really paying you any mind at the moment. It seems like everybody just assumes that if you're in there, you're supposed to be in there. Cool. Great. I'm going to look around for a bit. I'm going to like observe maybe like there's a box above everything else, because overlooking everything yeah so you can see that uh there are two doors up to the northern part of this map in okay. uh one of them says private and the other says restricted access okay the one on the left says restricted access the one on the right says private uh otherwise there are a few gems in the ceiling, and you would know that... Uh, actually, you would need an Arcana check to know what these gems do. Alright, I have... I'm actually good at Arcana. Then go for it. I am not. But to see things I can see. Uh, you would know with that 15 that... Uh, these gems are used in certain places similar to like surveillance cameras as they are kind of 
like a more minor version of Arcane Eye. Okay. Got a purity just now. You tell us? Like, do we know? I, yeah, I tell him, like, those gems up in the ceiling seem to be a purity. Just. And this is the first time you've seen them so far since you've come in. That's good for us. Can yeah. I look around and see, like, if the Kenku's in here? Uh, you that... don't see any Kenku's in here. You see mostly human type races, and you would notice, especially traveling with Zin, that uh, you've not seen any other dragonborn in most of these travels. Huh. I can't look at. Like you've seen plenty of elves and dwarves and gnomes and halflings and humans, but. And the one odd Goliath that you came across, but not any other dragonborn, which, you know, isn't, they're not a super common race, but they are usually a bit more common than, than you have seen so far in the city. I look at the dragonborn, and I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm just like apparently stupidity made you guys extinct. <laughs> so it seems... Um, I'm just gonna walk in. You're gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna walk in and mingle, or uh, quote unquote mingle. All right. Uh, you are also welcome to play any of these games of chance if you'd like. But uh, otherwise, you do see that there is a very shifty-looking bartender uh, over here. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, go over and approach the bartender. Yeah. What kind of games are we talking about here? You see poker and uh, blackjack and roulette tables and, uh, you know... and Give me a, that blackjack table. All right, so you head to the blackjack table and... Which table is that? <laughs> and let's see, where is... Uh, there we go. Uh, you, there is a blackjack table. There are the two tables to the bottom that you can see. Uh, Zin, you were talking to the barkeep and yes. he just looks at hey, what can I get you uh information actually says uh, I don't have much of that yeah just a couple of questions I'm kind of new to town I wanted to know what this place was about says all right well ask away I guess well the, do you know who the guy who runs this place is he looks at you very suspiciously. He says, what do you want to know about the boss? I'm just asking. He seems to run a very respectable establishment. I wanted to compliment. He says, well, I'm sure he would appreciate that. But if you don't have anything you need to order, I'm sure I have other customers to attend to. I look around. Is there any people aside from us in this room? Uh, yeah, there's plenty of other people in the room, okay. but nobody's at nobody else is at the bar yet. I was like, All right, what do you uh, what do you serve? It says, well, it depends on what your tastes lie in. If you want just booze, we got plenty of that. But if you want something a little extra, I might be able to work that out for you as well. Although I know your people tend to like uh, more fishy products, unfortunately, we don't have any fish on the menu. That's fine. I don't normally eat fish. He says, oh, really? I always heard the Dragon Board love fish. Ah, must be my mistake. Not all of them. Uh, sure, I'll take a, a mead. He says, ah, all right. And then he hands one over and he says, that'll be 20 silver. Bit steep, ain't it? And I put two gold on the counter. He says, well, it looks like you can afford it. And then he snatches it away, and then he throws some change on the table. What's the change? Uh, it, it, it's pretty obvious that he's taken uh, a bit for himself as he only... He throws it in silver, but it's only uh, the equivalent of, like, one gold and... Or, uh, it's a little less than one gold, so he took a few for himself automatically. 
There goes his tip. So how much silver was it? Uh, you get 80 silver, or 8 silver back. Sorry. 8 silver, okay. 8 silver, man, you made money. Keep buying drinks here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the exchange rates always throw me off. Isn't it 10 silver per gold? 10 silver per gold, uh, so you get 8 silver back, so he just charged you uh, 12 silver for a 10 silver drink. Yeah, figured. But you said it was 2 gold. You said it was 20 silver, didn't you? Uh, I thought it was 10 silver? No, you said 20 silver. Oh, then... I am completely off, and yes, he takes all of your gold then. Okay. Because uh, I am terrible at remembering there. the exchange rates of gold to silver. I am just gonna, I guess I'm just gonna sit there and drink it at the bar, looking around still, eyeing those two doors that I saw. Okay. Uh, and he noticed, uh, in the meantime, Sasha, did you want to play any blackjack? Oh yeah. All right. How how much would you like to wager? I'm gonna wager five gold pieces. All right. Roll two d ten. That's just slash roll space two d ten, right? Yep. So you get a total of eight on your cards. I'm going to hit. <laughs> so, let's roll another d10. Yep. <laughs> you get a three, so you're I'm at a three. roll again. <laughs> All right. You oh, just... hmm. So that's an 11. Hmm. No, I'm just going to Oh my god. All right. This is Apparently I'm, getting, I'm getting all the low cards. Yeah. Uh, you get one more hit if you want it. You gonna... now, here's a question. Would you let me lose my lucky feet? Here. I would and say that so a lucky a lucky feat seems only uh you know acceptable in a casino. I don't know why I wouldn't allow that. Perfect. Yeah. And then just take the what would get me closer to twenty one. Yeah, well, so what do you what do you have? Uh go I'm ahead. Thirteen right now, so Yeah, so you get to roll an extra dice for lucky, right? Yeah, and then I'm just going to take whatever gets me closer to 21 without yep. breaking. Roll, roll 2d10. So you can take the 2. Please, <laughs> uh, I'm not doing good here. That, that gets you, what, 15? Yeah. yeah. All right, and uh, dealer shows 18. Damn it. <laughs> okay. So you lose your, what, 3 gold that you bet? I'm on bet another three. All right, you get you get to do this one more time before we jump over to Professor S. So another game. Go ahead and roll two d ten. You get eight on the dice. You can split them if you want. Yeah, I'm gonna split them. All right, then you can split them for another three gold. Okay. All right, so you uh, we're gonna go on the first one. You currently have a four. So keep rolling d tens until you don't want to roll anymore. That brings you to seven, <laughs> eight. <laughs> uh, the eight, 17. the wait, the eight can also be a seventeen. <coughs> or, no, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a seventeen on that. Or it, it, it's an eighteen, but yeah. Eighteen. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stay on the 18, and now I get to do the other one, right? Yeah, so that's 9, bringing it to 13. Okay. 
and that brings you to 16. I'll stay on that. All right, so you got an, uh, an 18. 18 and a All right, let's see. So dealer shows a three, a 10 for 13, and 18 total. So. And so that's a. So a, it's a push, and then I lose one. So yep. I get. All right. Well, at least I didn't lose. It, at least you didn't lose three of them. Uh, and so, Professor S, what do you want to do right now? So I saddle up to the bar, uh, uh, and I try to talk to the bartender. Uh, hello. Uh, I, by the way, I didn't hear what Devin said about the, uh, um, like, like I didn't hear what Devin asked about the bartender. Um, so I saddle up to the bar and I say, um, hello, I was wondering if you could tell uh, me about the uh, owner of this kind of family. He looks at you, and then he looks at Zinn, and he says, yeah. In his mind, I, in his <laughs> mind, I'm like, I already asked him about this. He's <laughs> already suspicious of me. I don't know, he's just like, yeah, you know what? Let me go chat with the boss. And then you see him like reach under the table, and uh, and then he brings his hand back out, and he's like, "I'll be right back." I glare charm over person. at Professor X. <laughs> I cast charm person on him. And. Uh, as you cast Charm Person, you hear uh, you you feel a rumbling. But go ahead and cast your Charm Person, and uh, it does manage to pass. So he's currently charmed. Right. Um. So I say. Oh, uh, uh, you don't need to, uh, go talk, uh, you, nah, you don't need to go talk to the boss. I just need you to tell me, uh, what you're thinking about. He says, oh, well, uh, I already let him know you're here. And you hear that rumbling just getting louder and louder. I... <laughs> okay, uh, gonna cast text thought see uh what this guy so when you cast detect thoughts you can immediately tell that he uh he pressed some sort of alarm button that notified the boss and the boss has ways to tell what's going on uh and there is a big uh what they call the muscle somewhere in the restricted room uh usually if there's real trouble the muscle is called out and you hear that rumbling coming from the restricted room as uh, people are starting to get a little nervous and they see you see them start packing up their poker chips and and gold and whatever else and people are starting oh. to try and like head out of the room so I telepathically talk to my venture mate. I believe I have awoken whatever it may be. <laughs> I believe uh. you have made a grave mistake. <laughs> and at that moment, uh, as, a, as a book falls off of my stuff, you uh, hear the door burst open and I need everybody to roll initiative as soon as I clear this turn list. Wait a minute. What if I don't want to get into the fight because I'm sitting in the corner down next to them? Uh, yeah. If you don't want, you can still roll initiative and then just do nothing and stay off to the side if you like. This is a bad plan. <laughs> well, I was doing just fine. I was just like, I'm just complimenting the owner, but no. I, I, I'm trying to get more straight to the point. <laughs> would bring out the Hulk or whatever. All right, uh, let's put this in order. Cool. So you see uh, a trap door opens right behind the the bartender, and he jumps into it, and you hear it like latch and lock shut from the other side, 
as the door bursts open to the restricted room. Great. And who? this room opens up and there's also a foul smell that comes with it. Uh, some sort of decay as a very large lizard folk man comes bursting through the door who many might recognize as Killer Croc. Mm. Fantastic. (laughs) Professor S, you are up first. Okay, this this is fine. I only have two first level spell slots left, but this is fine. Uh... I will have definite whispers. So, um, you whisper a discordant melody that only one creature uh, of your choice is in range to hear, racking it with terrible pain. The creature must take a wisdom saving throw on a fail state to take a to psychic damage. It must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows the way to move. The creature doesn't move into obviously dangerous surroundings with fire. On successful save, the target takes half as much damage. Doesn't have to do that. All right. So it uh, is a wisdom save. It fails on that, Oof. and uh, so it takes how many? Um, so go ahead and roll the damage of psychic damage. Uh, Fourteen. 14 is a solid amount of psychic damage. And I wish I could move the map more, but unfortunately I can't. Uh, 14, so minus 14 psychic damage. And you see him clawing at his head, and immediately he tries to smash into the other room, and he's just like bashing into the wall repeatedly. I say, be gone, foul beast, be Alright, that's my action. Uh, and we're gonna put him here just so he's still on the map, but uh yeah. Oh, I see what you're talking about now. Just making sure everybody's visible. Yeah, I just don't want to say anything while he was <laughs> Yeah. Uh so he's bashing into that wall. Uh, does he get to repeat that saving throw at, at the end of turns? Okay. Oh, all right. Wow, that is. A first level spell. God dang. Yeah, that's that's intense. I'm double checking it right now. Uh, in the meantime, Sasha will be up. Uh, the creature doesn't move, and I'm sexist. Oh, yeah, so he just does it once. It's not like he's, like, continuously <coughs> running away. All right, so that makes sense then. So that at least gives you some, some breathing room for a moment to move around as needed. Sasha, you are up. I need to strap him in there. I look at the big creature that just walked out and walked back in, and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to fight that. <laughs> so I'm going to look at the table and see if, like, is the dealer still there, or did he leave too? Uh, he saw the door bash open, and he took off. Is there any gold or anything left on the table? There are poker chips, but uh, no actual gold. And I redeemed the poker chips. Uh, you would need there to be people around in order to do that, but everybody seems to be hurriedly rushing out of this place. How much money worth the per- poker chips are we talking about here? I mean, on the table, there's entire stacks of them. But So you're welcome to pocket them. Uh, whether or not they'll be redeemable in the future is up to me, I guess, as the DM. I am going to take the stack that has the most value basically all right you see a stack of black chips and you shove them in your bag as your as your free object interaction and anything else you want to do 
Um, I am going to, one second. I'm just going to go here. Okay. And just kind of shuffle my way through the people and be like, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. And I'm just going to stop my turn right there. Okay. I just needed to put this person into initiative order. Uh, and as you go there, you do notice a Kenku poke his head out from this door over here and then immediately duck back in and shut the door. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And you do hear the door lock, but, uh, now it is Zin's turn. I look at uh, Professor S. I'm like, you really shouldn't have done. And I'm going to. <clears throat> like where? I'm going to walk up to the door, and I'm just going to. Is the door shut behind in front of me? Oh no, he just bashed right through. No, I'm not going to bash in. Oh, I mean, it's wide open. Oh, it's wide open. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to cast Moonbeam. Oh. Moonbeam, that's a good one to cast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm going to cast Moonbeam on our pissed off alligator friend. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, point within range. Uh, Constitution saving throw. All right. Yeah, he is meaty. Yeah, he does. Uh, let's let's. What see. is my saving throw? I believe it's fourteen. Yes, fourteen. He fails surprisingly enough. Cool. Two d ten. Let's roll that two d ten. Damn, good roll. Sixteen. All right. Yeah. My room. So he starts sizzling in the moonlight and he screams and turns to you and roars. Anything else with your turn? Uh, that was an action. Wait, what am I bonus action? Uh, <coughs> uh, nope. Nothing else. All right. It's his turn. He comes at you. Yeah. Uh, what's your AC? 19. Yeah, he hits. Um, uh, first thing he does is try to slash at you with his claw. Dealing. Let's see, where is my... Uh, dealing 14 slashing damage. Oh, that's not that bad. Yep. And then he tries to chomp onto you with his hand, with his mouth. Okay. 14 slashing damage would take me almost down to half health. <laughs> health. I'm a paladin. I'm supposed to be the tank. Yeah. yeah, I got two levels in woods, which doesn't help my HP out. And he chomps down real hard. As I drop one down into the abyss and that's going to be 17 piercing damage as he chomps into you but and he's grabbing and trying to tear but he can't get a good grip through your armor mm. and professor s is up okay uh Not really much I can do. I have one spell slot left. Uh, so, um, going to cast Arms of Hadar. Okay. Uh, I've got to make a strength save of 15 or take 2d6 necrotic damage. And it can't take reactions. Alright. Uh,. Wow, that was a crap roll. Uh, he, he somehow, Killer Croc of all people, failed his strength save. 
<laughs> and a console. <laughs> oh, a uh, giant. <laughs> yeah, he, I don't know how. He, he has like some serious modifiers there, but nope, he's just gone. It it, it just that's when I roll the worst. A uh, giant, dark, uh, tentacly arm just go up and start slapping him. Oh, <laughs> He, he gets bitch slapped for four damage by black a tentacles. Perfect use of my, a perfect use of my last spell. Uh, arms. And does anything else happen from that? I feel like there's like a restraining. Uh, can't take reactions until next turn. Yeah, that's all. Okay, no reactions. Sasha, you are up. Guys. Bar him in. Bar him in. <laughs> All right, I am going to five ten move to this door. Now, as a DM, I always have to ask this: Will you allow this? I have a pouch of water, and I put the water into the lock, and then cast shape water and freeze the locking mechanism so it breaks, so I can open the door. Or do you want me to slide a hand lock pick it? I mean, it's not. It's a very basic lock. So both of those actions are going to take about the same amount of time, but it's... Uh... Okay, then I'll just slide a hand. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd say a 23. Yeah, you definitely slide of hand that crap. And you, the door swings open, and you see a Kenku standing there. Just uh, very angrily looking at you. But that did take your action, so if there's anything else you'd like to do. Can I talk to him? Yeah. I'm just going to be like, oh, buddy, old pal, I have some chips that I need traded in, and then I'll get out of your way. Like, what? Chips? Uh, poker chips. <sighs> To get the hell out of my establishment, and you do I do anything, and, and and you do know that usually Kenku have this like weird speech pattern, but he's different and he has his own voice, which is very strange. But uh, he's like, you come into my place, yeah? Don't you see that there is just mass chaos happening? Just get the hell out. And I will leave once I get paid. I won these chips fair and square. And he's... And uh, you see him take out this stick, which... And, and it pops open into a shield and suddenly shoots out a projectile at you with his turn. Hmm. <laughs> okay. <coughs> oh, and that is cockeyed. So, to do, do, uh, and it's going to hit you, Silver barbs. <laughs> de dealing 12 piercing damage. I'm going to use silver barbs as a reaction so that he has to re roll that attack. Okay, so I'm be like, this is not what I had planned. Yeah, he still hits, okay. so you take 12, 12 piercing damage, and uh, it immediately. Uh, you can you can hear him fiddling with it afterwards, as it has some sort of crossbow type mechanism to it. But he's not very adept at handling it. And uh, now it's Zin's turn. Okay. All right. So, Killer Croc cannot take any more actions, right? Correct. Because he, he can't take a reaction. He cannot take a reaction. No. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move thirty feet away. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Move over here. That's my movement, and then as my action, I'm going to move the moonbeam on top of. All right. So you move. That's my bonus action. Okay. I'm going to burn the rest of my land hands pool. No, never mind. That's my. Never mind. I'm going to burn the rest of my land hand pool, but keep the moonbeam where it is. So twenty health back. 
Okay, the moonbeam's still on top of him either way, so yeah, that's fine. I yeah, so I believe if he starts his turn in it... Yeah, then he, then he gets to roll another con check and... Yeah. Yes. So, uh, you move on back, use your lay on hands, and did you use your action? No, that was my action. Oh, okay. Lay on hands was my action. Okay, cool. Then, uh, yeah, at the start of his turn, he makes constitution saving throw. Ugh! And he crit fails it. <laughs> yeah! I get to roll another 2d10. Uh, he looks directly up into the boon beam, and it blinds him for a moment. Hey, another 16 damage. <laughs> yeah. And so he takes 16 damage, which is already getting to be quite a lot. And he is currently blinded and just starts stumbling through, waving his hands wildly. So, and, and he goes behind the bar and just slamming into stuff over and over again. And just, there you see bottles crashing to the ground and it's just getting a little uh, messy back there, to say the least. Cool. And uh, you guys are really good at making him waste his turns. So Professor S, you are up. Okay. Uh, make it so that I have a third level spell slot again. Uh, and then I'm going to pass. He's blinded, right? Yes, he is currently blinded. Uh, but it'll only probably last until the, his next turn. Okay. Uh, gonna cast Hunger of Hadar, um, around him. So. Uh, so, whenever, um, that, it, uh, I just create a giant black hole looking thing, and it keeps, that starts to burn in the area, take, uh, 2 to hole damage, and it keeps you that end of turn in the area, most of you're on a dexterity saving throw, okay. take 2 to six acid damage, so he's now in the, uh, horrifying Eldridge black area. Alright, so... And he gets to make a dexterity check, you said? Uh, it just appears, like, uh... 20 foot radius I sphere. Like... At the start of his next turn. Okay, so it's there. He's just, nothing happens to him quite yet. Yeah. Alright, and it is a 20 foot radius sphere. So we're going to draw that really quick. Courtesy of draw a circle. And let's see, five, ten. Uh, I would assume that you don't want to hit anybody you know. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So we'll we'll start it off screen. Uh, let's see. So if it's true. 20 feet in radius means 40 feet altogether. It's pretty damn close. Let's actually turn this into a circle. And we're going to bring it it's like here. It's way bigger than I expected. Yeah, okay. 20 foot radius uh, is pretty damn big. Yeah. <laughs> oh, should we do, should I draw a circle for a uh, moonbeam? Uh, sure, that'd be super helpful. Yeah. It's only five feet. Yes. All right, so moonbeam, I'm going to make gold. And, oh, there you go. That's... Uh, I don't know how to delete that. There we go. No, that's fine. All right. How can, I'm going to move that. Uh, it was here. All right, for, for now. We'll okay. There. Cool. Uh, Sasha, you are up. I'm 
just going to start cussing at this guy while I pull up my rapier. Just be like, I won't cuss on stream, don't worry. But right, okay. I'm, I'm just going to be like, all you had to do was give me my money and I would have been out of here and that big guy could have killed those two and I wouldn't have cared. But no, you had to shoot me. Now I'm going to have to kill you. And hey. as I'm walking to him and I'm going to kind of go around him and I'm just going to stab him in the side. Okay. Uh, great beard. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to use your bonus action to cause... Nope, I cannot move before I do that bonus Oh, okay. So go ahead and do that then. Yeah, that definitely hits, and you definitely hit him for seven piercing damage. All right. And, yeah, I'm just, like, still frustrated with the man. I'm still mm -hmm. just, like, you know, above up just because I'm just mad <laughs> now. <laughs> All right. But as, as, I'm about, as I'm stabbing him, I'm smiling as I'm talking to him, like, in a piece. Like, just be with him. Okay. Okay. And uh, then next up is his turn, and he says, "Oh, hold on, hold on! I'll, I'll get you your, I'll get, I'll get you your money." Uh, and he, he says, I, "I just gotta go into my office to get it. You just gotta let me go into my office." I'm gonna go with you into your office so I know I get my money. Okay. So uh, he opens the door to his office, and. He starts slowly trying to make his way in here using half speed. He's just like, it's just behind my desk. Just take it easy. And he makes his way back here. Can I stop him before he gets to his desk or no? Uh, you can if you want. Uh, you, you can take an attack of opportunity. I'm going to yell, like, hold it right before like he gets to that point. Okay. Oh. I would be here at that point. Okay. And I'm going to take my tech up opportunity. All right. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Uh, you you stab him in his hand and his, like, weird uh, wing type of hand. And it, like, immediately can't really function as well. You must have hit some sort of tendon with that critical success. And uh, you do 12 piercing damage. And next up is Zin. I'm going to take my action to move the moonbeam right on top of him again. All right. He is uh, in in some rough situations. All right, so roll 2D. Oh, roll, roll, roll me a uh, saving throw, please. Uh, isn't it? I think it's on the beginning of his turn, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, uh... so he gets to roll a couple saves at the beginning of his turn. First, we're going to do the moonbeam. Ah, damn. Not as good. Uh, well, it's still damage. Yeah. And that's going to be... Uh, what is it? Constitution saving throw? Uh, from Moonbeam, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he does manage to pass that this Okay, time. so it's three. Seven. Okay. And now his dexterity saving throw. Uh, he actually manages... Oh, that's at the end of his turn. At oh. the beginning, he just takes damage. Okay. So, uh, he's gonna take four damage. Okay, so he takes four damage just at the beginning, just for the hell of it. And he is in this black void. Uh, no light, magical or otherwise, can illuminate the area. I could get all finicky about how moonlight works in a black void, but I'm still it's I'm just radiant damage. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let it be, and uh, he's kind of not he just kind of can't see anything, so he's just bumping into uh, walls, and he's all turned around. Let's see if he manages to happen to turn in the proper direction to move out of there. He does not. So he's just kind of stuck there, and he has to break a dexterity saving throw and fails. So roll another 2d6 for the acid damage for four more damage. This was going to be a super intense fight, but you're immobilizing the crap out of him. <laughs> we're players. That's what we're designed. Yeah, you're, you're immediately designed to throw all of my stuff out the window. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, as as my least prepared quest, oh you my immediately God. tried oh to God. go on all of that. So, um, yeah. Professor S, it is your turn. Ah, uh, well, oh. Uh, I'm going to, uh, there's nothing really need to do. He's kind of like a pain. He'll just die in there. Uh, so I guess I'll move over to, um, Tasha. Or Sarah, or whatever. Alright. And then you can get, I'm assuming at 30 feet, you can get right next to her. So. Yeah. Cool. So I um, wheel up over to her and I say, hey, have you found the, uh, yeah. And, uh, you. I didn't hear what you said, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you broke up a little bit. Oh, I said, uh, have you found the tank? <laughs> yeah. I guess you could say that. As as you do notice, there is a bit of blood on his rapier, or her rapier. What did you do? He shot me with the arrow, so I stabbed him twice. Alright. Uh, uh, I mean, if you want to use your action for something, you can. Uh, but otherwise, that's about it. Oh. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, Sasha. I'm going to walk in, but I'm only going to kind of go past him and jump over to the other side of the desk to see what he was trying to reach for. Uh, you do see that there is some money, but there is also a hand crossbow. Oh, you were just looking to shoot me again, huh? So, no, no, I was going to grab you the money. That's it. What is it? Uh, there is about 50 gold. Oh, oh. <laughs> and that would just be an object incorrect to grab it. Yeah, because it is out in the open. It is not in a safe or anything like that. I'm going to snag that 50 gold. Yeah. And just be like. Well, now you don't actually have the money to pay for my chips. So what are we going to do here now? <laughs> and I take my rapier and I kind of point it towards him. And you see his eyes go wide. And he's like, uh, I mean, you just took everything I had on hand. Um, I can always have an IOU. IOU. <laughs> IOU. <laughs> and she kind of sits there and thinks about it for a second. <laughs> She's just like... That big guy out there. You know him? He says, well, yeah, he's my he's my muscle. He works for me now. And you won't die. He says, well, uh... You don't have any money to pay him now, and I actually have to pay him. That or you die. Uh, he says, well, all right. And then I kind of pause there and think, like, will he even listen to me? <laughs> You're welcome to make an insight check against uh, what is the penguin. So. Nope. Nope. Uh, as far as you're, you can tell, he's just offering up his services. I'm always stabbing with the rapier. All right. You stab him with the rapier. Go ahead and make an attack roll. Yep. That definitely hits. And he falls to the ground. He is not quite dead, but he is in very, very rough shape. And he's just screaming and wailing in pain. And you hear that. Wah, wah, wah. I'm just, I'm just going to be like, I don't play games. If he's not going to follow me, then I'm not going to try to get his services. But if he's willing to because you value life and you're going to beg him to follow me, then I might, you know, let you live. He says, hey, I'm going to do everything. I, I, I gave him up to you already. What do you, what do you want? All right, I'm going to drag your sweet little butt out there once I have movement. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to tell him. All right. Uh, and 
Next up is his turn. He's currently immobilized, so Zin, you're up. All right. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to use the... You know, no, I'm just going to... What else can I... What's... Yeah, I'm just going to keep the moonbeam on him. All right. Uh, but I'm going to move further away. I'm going to move over to uh, this side of the room. Okay. You currently don't know where the moonbeam is in there, but you are... Because it is just a giant black void. Yeah, true. But I actually you... know it's 120 feet tall, so I can see if it's not outside. Uh, I mean, it pretty much fl floored a ceiling okay. for... Okay. In that yeah. case, then... Yeah, I'm just going to keep the moonbeam into that void. Yeah. And he's a big guy. There's a good chance you're going to hit him no matter what. So Yeah. So. And Does he have to make the saving throw, or do I? Uh... uh no, I mean, oh. he will have to on his turn. So, his turn. He passes on the saving throw. So, oh. he takes two damage. Uh, and he still currently can't see. He flails around. Still not finding his way out. Oh my god, this battle is completely one-sided. All right. And he fails his dexterity saving throw. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, so he takes... The, yeah. Six... Alright. Alright. Uh, you hear him just wailing in pain. And Sasha, you're up. You can drag the penguin uh, half speed out towards this area. All right. I'm going to drag him half speed, so 5, 10, 15. But then I'm going to do my uncanny whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and move another 15. All right. So 5, 10, 15. All right. We're just going to put him, like, here. Yeah. So I'm going to hold my rapier up basically to his neck. And I'm going to be like, tell him. Uh, as they walk past, I'm like, you're, as they walk past, I'm like, you're gonna keep him alive, right? He ordered if he obeys me. If not, then no. You shot me with the arrow. You shouldn't have done that. Uh, this is a trade off. Well, it's either his life or I get the big giant lizard man. The one that currently wrapped in uh, me and Devin possibly uh, like area of effect I guess so at uh, at your command he shouts out to him he shouts out in draconic I understand draconic <laughs> you understand but nobody else does so what you he what he everybody else hears is like weird roaring and snarls and uh, you can't really tell what's happening, but the one dragonborn can hear. Come, come towards my direction and attack wildly. Zin, it's your turn. Yeah, I'm going to uh, approach. Just get right out with the range, but within a 15 foot area, yeah. and breath weapon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Roll me. Uh, well, you gotta do a DC 12 saving throw. Dex. Dex, uh, he passes. Okay, so that's half damage? Uh, actually, he can't really see it coming, so I'm gonna give you advantage on it. Uh, he still okay. passes, so. Okay, so it's roll. So uh, was that? Three? three? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Alright. And at the start of his turn, uh, roll the initial cold or acid damage, whatever it is, as well as the moonbeam damage. Uh, he manages to pass on the moonbeam, and the other one's automatic, so. Okay. 
I have to roll the moonbeam damage? Yes, roll your moonbeam damage. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> he lucky he managed to pass, but still, goddamn. And the other five damage. This dude's starting to run out of health. Uh, and then he comes bounding forward. And he can finally see and sees the rapier and slashes and bites. I was going to put the penguin in front of me. <laughs> so that I at least had some protection. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can, but he does have very long arms and he is very big. Okay. Um, I'll probably use my last silvery bards. <laughs> So that one of those rolls is at a disadvantage. Oh, you are you son of a gun! Uh, <laughs> I had done a, I had critted. I was so excited about it, and no, no. All right. Welcome It still hits with a nineteen on the dice for the second roll, but damn it, I was so close. Uh, all right. So he slashes at you for a nineteen, dealing uh, do 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 do. Uh, nine, fourteen slashing damage, and right, then I'm down. All right, you go down, and uh, he doesn't seem particularly threatened by the uh, by the the bald sorcerer man so he doesn't bite at you which would have been extra extra rough and he doesn't bite he he's about to bite at the uh, downed pirate rogue and then immediately the penguin is just says, Now, just help me up, god damn it. And he manages to not do that. Sasha, make a death save. <laughs> that is one failure. Although the way I like to play it is that nobody knows whether or not you're failing. So you roll it, but nobody can act based on those rolls. So, like, if for, for all you know, she could have totally rolled great or bad, and you get to treat it the same role-playing-wise. Penguin gets helped to his feet, and he looks at the sorcerer next to him. And, wait, where the hell... Oh, you somehow disappeared from the initiative order, so I want you to go ahead and take your turn. I just kind of, uh, like, uh, hello, we, uh, are going to be, uh, you for some information that you are willing to And we're just going to put you up there. Uh, said, information. My croc is going to freaking chomp you guys in half. Uh, I'm going to cast friends on him. Okay. <laughs> uh, for one minute, I have advantage of all the checks directed at him. Okay. So, um, I just say, oh, man, come on. Like, it's not even going to be that hard. Like, yeah, it'll be easy. Come on. Uh, he says, well, I am a little injured. But screw you! And then he like tries to slash at you with his umbrella, but it's just a basic club, and he doesn't have a lot of strength, so he misses. Wait, what did he roll? Uh, he rolled a five on the dice and did not have much of a modifier to help him out. Yeah. Uh, I know your AC is next to non-existent, but still can't. He still beats, uh, or you still beat a what would essentially be a five. So. Great. <laughs> right. 
And Zin, you're up. Your party member is down. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I have no way of picking them up. Oh no. Oh <laughs> no. I play on hands pool. So, <laughs> move the moonbeam. <laughs> Use your action. On to the crock. Okay. And then move even further away. Uh, two, three, four, five, six. Just go to that side of the room. And then keep the moonbeam on Killer Croc. <laughs> All right. Um, Killer Croc gets to... He fails his constitution saving throw. Roll your damage. Man, I love that 16. Oh. Oh. Holy oh. crap. You see him fall to his knees. He is not quite down, but damn, he is close. <laughs> uh, and Sasha, make another death save. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. First character death was going to be me, and I didn't even think that through. <laughs> Professor S. You can use your action to make a medicine check to help stabilize, but that's only if you want to. Alright, uh, so can I use the next to her? Thank you, the way. No, you're uh, five feet, you're within five feet. Yeah, you're within five feet. You can, uh, you can, okay. you can try and stop the bleeding. Uh, so natural one. Uh, plus He's the one that kills me. Uh, yeah, he falls <laughs> into you. Um, <laughs> I forgot about a wheelchair. Yeah, you fall out of your wheelchair as you were inspecting the wound. You immediately accidentally like drive your hand into the wound, causing an another death save uh, immediately. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't want to force you to fail automatically, but it will force you to make another death save right now. And you fail, and you are dead. <laughs> All right, you want to make another character? Yeah. Sasha. Jesus. <laughs> I, I was really excited about Sasha, but I, I guess so, so long, Sasha. Oh, boy. Goodbye, Sasha. Oh, no. It rolls all the way up to my death save. <laughs> oh, no. Dead. Uh, oh no the rogue is dead <laughs> oh no oh man oh man oh, no. don't worry oh, i'll no. create a more evil character that's <laughs> <laughs> oh god dang it uh that's my next character like he is like he doesn't care who you are if he gets in his way he'll just kill you <laughs> okay uh and then next the penguin just kind of pokes at you with his umbrella over and over driving it into the wound until uh, he notices that no blood is actually coming out, so he just kind of squawks at you. Uh, and then Zin, you're up. Uh, cool, I'm going to move one stick right there, and I'm going to slash at him twice. All right. Breaking the moonbeam. Go for it. All right. Nope. Nope. And second one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, <a> crit. <laughs> you slash once and then he leeches reaches out to try and bite at you, seeing he misses seeing you that you missed, and you drive your sword directly up into his skull and you see it pop out the top of his head. And his whole body immediately goes limp and falls over, and you see the penguin look at you and just like all right all right i get it i give up I you're give coming up. with me so, i look at him you're coming with me says, yeah yeah i i got you i got it that's fine uh, I, that's fine <laughs> <laughs> as uh as his only means of defense is immediately dead uh you bring the penguin out and as soon as he gets outside Somehow he steps into a snare. Uh, yeah, I will add another character sheet for you, Sasha. We are just going to be wrapping this up very shortly. So, 
um, there's no need to hot jump into it right away. So, um, the, <laughs> you bring the penguin outside. And as soon as the penguin steps outside, somehow he steps in a snare. It wraps him up and yanks him up to the rooftops. And you see the shadowy figure just say, I thank you for your help. I'm sorry about your friend. And he, Don't worry. We took one of theirs in retaliation. Says, and to be fair, she would not be sorry for me. Says, I, I understand. And he flips down the wand that it has that is inscribed with Skyrite. And uh, you walk out 50 gold richer thanks to what was on Sasha that she took. Unless, so unless you don't. Uh, unless uh, I you don't. don't I, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it. Okay. Then, yeah, then, you, then you carry Sasha's body out, I assume, unless you just leave her to rot in there. No, I'm going to do funeral <laughs> burial rites. All right. So you take her to the local grave clerics and the following morning you have uh, ceremony rites for Sasha. Uh, I was not expecting a death on the very first session, but things happen. Uh, and you have managed to earn the favor of the Dark Knight. <laughs> and yes... Sasha's sister Tasha might be showing up in future sessions. Uh, with that, we wrap up today's session. The uh, You have completed one quest. The way all of my sessions will work is that you can work on quests. They are made to be completed in one session, but there will be overarching impressions of what happens to the world around and any items that you gather will carry over into future sessions. I cool. was very happy with how this turned out. Um, so was I. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Great. And that was a very... I, I as, as sad as I am that a character died, I find it hilarious that it was the result of a critical failure medicine check. <laughs> you know, right? Yes, don't perform medicine on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the player character. Yeah. What first chance you get. So, uh, thank you so much for being my dungeon master patrons and being the very first session here. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I. I plan to do plenty of these in the future, especially for Dungeon Master level patrons. Uh, anybody that's watching, feel free to check out Patreon down in the link below where you can find a link to become a Dungeon Master patron. Or for any of the ridiculous builds that I do, there are plenty of character sheets available there. Also, if you want to chat with us a bunch more, we us, including the Dungeon Master patrons and every other patron and anybody who wants to join, there is also a link to our Discord down below where you can chat with us plenty more. Uh, this was one hell of a session. I plan for most sessions to go any from anywhere from two to three hours, and this is pretty much three hours right on the dot. So yeah. thank you so much for Jason Willowhammer, Devin Happy, and Bot, a.k.a. Kilo Kilo. Uh, this was so much fun, and I can't wait to do it again. Uh, anybody that is a Dungeon Master patron can hop into these sessions and hopefully we'll wind up with more good sessions in the future. So thank you so much for joining. And that's it for today.